Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition game with the Dungeon Dudes. That's me, Dungeon Master Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin and I'll be playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Benitis playing Bayo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. The last time we left our heroes, they had crossed the ruins of Drakenheim, venturing from the, cl- the recently conquered Clock Tower, Veo's former hideout, in the center of the city. Crossing the city through the Market Square, the Theater Row, and past the Grand Guild Hall, our heroes came to the barracks of the Hooded Lantern, the fortress of the old City Watch and Drakenheim military within the city walls. There... They cut a deal with the commander of the Hooded Lanterns, a man named Elias Drexel, in exchange for a letter of mark permitting them to scour the ruins as needed. Our heroes agreed to turn over 20% of everything of value they find in the ruins to the Hooded Lanterns. (laughs) In addition, they made a promise to the commander that if they would find any information on what the followers of the Falling Fire or the Paladins of the Silver Order are planning in Drakenheim, that they would report it back. In the midst of all this, they uncovered that the badge that Veo has been keeping for some time is matched by the badge owned by the commander. Both of these are amulets marking the bearers as members of the small council, those who counseled the king of Drakenheim before the city's fall. What abilities that this badge might have or unlock within the city the commander seemed to be interested in, but his oaths prevented him, despite his better judgment, from seizing it from Yuveo. So in the meantime, you still have your father's badge as the steward of Drakenheim. My one piece of memory from him. After agreeing to spend the night in the barracks with the Hooded Lanterns, our heroes now plan to rendezvous with their old friend River of the Amethyst Academy at the Eckerman Mill, where our adventure began for the first time. Did they like our play? (laughs) They did. Um, Of course, if if you all remember from last week, having seized some costumes from some pageant wagons found in Theater Row, Veo, Paluto, and Sebastian decided to put on an impromptu performance for the Hooded Lanterns, which was met with some revelry and a barrel of watered-down mead. And so the evening with the Hooded Lanterns, uh, talking with Petra and some of her other compatriots and a few of the other Hooded Lanterns that you've known for some time, Veo. The evening passes with a little bit of merriment. The hooded lanterns are a little bit on edge, but your good humor takes the edge off, despite the fact that Petra's brother, Ansem, is very unimpressed with your antics. Mm. We're just so personable. <laughs> I don't like this brother. We're, oh. qu- we're quirky. We're just quirky. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... We have a mill to mm-hmm. head to. As you bed down for the evening, the Hooded Lanterns <sighs> direct yet. you down to the dungeons underneath the barracks. Mm-hmm. Oh. For that is where their own bunks are now kept. Fortunately for the Hooded Lanterns, deep enough underground, they've managed to carve out some sleeping quarters that allow them to avoid the worst effects of the haze in the city. But for anyone else that's camping out overnight, they they have they say they have to 
change their guards over quite often and make sure that they give people a fair amount of time outside the city walls themselves because staying here in their barracks as much as they're trying to hang on to it with the influence of the haze there are a large number of hooded lanterns that are quite sick and ill and you can see that their infirmary spaces are pretty packed <laughs> i wonder if there's ever a material that they could put to like block the haze that would be interesting yeah i think uh make a shield or yeah or maybe like out of clothing. What if we made armor out of it, and then we could wear it? I could wear it out of out it's of for me. what the haze? <laughs> <laughs> out of this haze miracle, armor? miracle. Oh yeah, just haze armor. Just I already have some of that. But we're not going to make a wall of tabaxi fur. Okay, you, <laughs> okay. Just, you, you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> the evening goes on in the, fairly late, but the hooded lanterns are up at the crack of dawn. There's a mustering horn that wakes you up right as the sun rises, or they'll, although you can't see the sun from inside the city. Not the least of which because the haze and the fog covers things over, but as soon as there's first light, the hooded lanterns are up. So again. do they kind of just guess? They're like, I, I think this is first light. I, th- I think the sun's rising. And they err on the side of getting up early. So by the time many of the hooded lanterns are up and running and getting their breakfast started in the camp, their breakfast being a pretty meager amount of gruel, warm bread, and what nuts and fruits and supplies that they have in the campsite. They are already rousing in darkness, pretty much. And by the time the rest of you are all up, there's hints of light coming through the clouds above. But again, with the haze and the clouds overhead, it's probably still early in the morning. Another reason why I didn't stay with the Hood and Lanterns. The river feeds me way better. <laughs> I'm also not a fan of getting up this early. I, uh, I'm a man who likes my sleep. That's all. In Caspia, <laughs> we wait for the sun to usually tell us to get up. I wait for my body to wake up naturally at about noon most days. Is yeah. it like a servant you have called the sun? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> As... Uh, <laughs> And he's not even my son. He's just the son. (laughs) Um, Petra says, in Drakenheim, we believe that every minute of light is a minute that you don't have to spend hiding from monsters. So we take advantage of as much daylight as we possibly can. That's why we're all up at the crack of dawn every day. Because we've got to get out there, get hunting, get supplies, and make sure that the roots are at least somewhat under control. At night... Things are far too dangerous, so we want to make sure that we seize every advantage we have, and every minute of daylight is a minute where we have the advantage and not the monsters. Makes sense for you. I completely disagree, but I like the darkness. I try to stay up most of the night. It's easier to navigate at night, the haze and the glow of of the meteor. As you take your breakfast in the mess hall that the hooded lanterns have assembled, Petra asks, are you going to stay with us for a few days or where are you going next? Uh, We have some errands to run, actually. Got to use our new uh, pass to try going in and out of the city. Work, work. From across one of the tables, Anson speaks up. I can't believe the commander showed you that kind of mercy. I can't believe you're still as rude as you are. Listen. You might have saved Petra, but you're still mercenaries, and that means you can't be trusted. You're you're only here as long as you're getting paid and being able to keep a little bit of what you scour from the ruins. All those things are the rightful property of the people of Drakenheim, and you're just stealing them. Hey, wait. We are the people. Are you guys... Are you and Petra twins? Yes, Petra's my sister. Okay, cool. And I go back to eating. Yeah, I mean, I am the people of Drakenheim, so technically, yes, some of it, or all of it, does belong to uh, partially me. Some of us are actually doing something for the city, actually. Yeah. Yeah. They're all around you right now. They're all around you right now. Of course they are. All the people here have bled for Drakenheim. Can you say the same? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in a in a pit with rats. Everything then, you've bled for, you've bled for yourselves. No. I mean, that's one way to look at it, but you'd be 
incorrect, but there's no point arguing with idiots. They think they're right. So uh, we're going to go back to our meal. Thanks for the conversation. All right. He bumps with that, <laughs> he, lo- he, he finishes his gruel bumps. and storms off. My ears are just a little bit like flat because I'm just like, as much as I enjoyed calling him an idiot, I'm just like, he's very intimidating. Mm. I'm not intimidated by him. <laughs> he's a good soldier. Like, I can respect his, his ability, but, you know, he's just held back by, you know, his own, you know, Well, at least ideals. one of us respects him. So far, everything I've seen from that man is horrible, and I have no respect for him, and I have no reason to talk to him any further than I have to. He's just not a people person. Maybe we just have to figure out who hurt him, and then we can make it better. If he keeps talking to me like that, <laughs> I'm going to hurt him. Ooh. 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 <laughs> We're practicing this ghost. As you fini- ghosts. As you, yeah, as you finish your breakfast, <laughs> you realize that you're amongst the last to leave the mess hall. The hooded lanterns have already mustered and so assembled. So distracted. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and many of the patrols are already out for the day. The few hooded lanterns that take to horses or uh, open up the hound kennels and have their hunting dogs with them have already set out on patrol and the garrison is manning it itself as well doesn't seem like there's anyone left to send you off Petra says a brief goodbye as she heads to her patrols but that's all there is bye (laughs) say bye to your brother for me we'll see you soon and stay safe keep surviving you too will do do we get our weapons back (laughs) When you when you go to leave, you will be giving your weapons back. Yes. Okay. <laughs> just check in. You're just itching to have your weapons back. Oh, <laughs> well, right? I just don't. They might. I don't want them to confiscate my new javelin. <laughs> it's true. What if they give you just a normal javelin back? I'm gonna be so mad. This one had it had. I remember what it wrote in it. I don't remember how to say it, <laughs> but I remember it had things wrote in it. Written in it. Written in it. <laughs> Are you all gonna step off and leave now? Yeah. Yeah. Let's head out. As you leave, the quartermaster... I read good. A man who looks like in his earlier days might have been quite portly, but you can see the skin is sagging off him because he hasn't eaten as many proper meals now. Mm -hmm. Returns your equipment to you. It's been well taken care of. And as you leave the gates, the commander is there and says, I don't expect you back anytime soon, but if you do find anything out, let us know. We may want to check on those paladins and, you know, whatever we find out, we'll report back when we're back on our way through the city. We'll be keeping an eye on them from a distance, but if you can get any word from inside there, we'd love to know. If you find out any information about uh, ways in and out of the castle, you let us know. We've got a deal. All right. So long, Commander. Bye. Safe travels. Later. With that, you exit through Shepherd's Gate. The hooded lanterns open the gates for you, which are still in full operation. It's a pair of portcullis that they raise up, a set of double gates and doors on either end, and a short passage through. And as you step through the gate, you can see that the gatehouse itself, the wide opening channel of Shepherd's Gate, which in its heyday would have been Flocks of cattle would have come here into the cattle pens. But overhead, you can see all the murder holes that the hooded lanterns have set up overhead. uh, And all the different arrow slits along the side from which the hooded lanterns can attack someone that tries to make their way through this gate. The little fortress here is under a good garrison. It would take quite a lot of effort to dislodge the hooded lanterns, as as, as few of them as there are. The fortifications of Drakenheim are pretty impressive. All right. Well, we knew we made a good decision not to fly our way through this gate. <laughs> I guess we can we can have a, a standing deal for now. Yeah. With this tax. I'm winking. <laughs> tax. You come through the other side of the gates, the... Hooded Lanterns do have a small stockade assembled on the other side of the gates. They've dug a ditch 
that then they built a palisade kind of in a semicircle around it that has another drawbridge, an extra level of defense on both sides of the gate. A pair of the hooded lanterns out that side lower the small wooden plank platform as you go across, and they raise it up quickly as you leave. The ditch itself is filled with a low, la- a low little amount of water and several sharpened stakes all along the edge. That you can see that there's a few rattling skeletons and a bits of bits of leftover knoll still in there. It seems that even with all these defenses, once in a while. The gnolls and rattlings still try to make a push. Don't fall into this pit. <laughs> I make zero promises. <laughs> clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and play tricky. <laughs> I usually would. Why would you say that? <laughs> oh, sorry. Now I'm on the defense. <laughs> I'm assuming you're coming after me. All right. So you're making back for... The, the mill? mill? The mill. The, the old mill. Eckerman Mill. I wonder if more names are crossed off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You take a familiar path. If we can open up our map, we'll take a look here. You're taking a, a well-trodden path. You've come this way several times before, and with Veo's expertise in your memory of the way, you have a few back alleys and hidden paths that you can quickly bring the group down. You pass by to your south, the old Rat's Nest Tavern, off on a side road, as you head along Shepherd's Way, making for the Karen Hills. As always, this is a ramshackle and rundown part of Drakenheim, a part of the city known as the Sprawl, the newest part of the city, relatively speaking, mostly wooden buildings that have burned out almost completely, making it fairly easy to see far down the road what's coming for you (laughs) or what you might be running from (laughs) aside from when you go back into the side streets do you take the side streets or just the main road what do you think Veo? where's the safest route is it in the day it's It's daytime it is it's the morning but drakenheim is dangerous day or night so i mean i think let's be cautious and take the side streets okay okay you head along the side streets before you come back to heading along, kind of taking the shortcut up along Shepherd's Way to where eventually you'll come to the Karen Fields, the Karen Hills. You manage to spend, about, it only takes you about 45 minutes, an hour before you're right at the edge of the city limits safely. It's around here that Veo, you smell rat really heavily as you come back along the road Hmm. and looking down you can see in the mud in front of you are the footprints of dozens of ratlings and a deep groove in the middle of the footprints (laughs) i know we we asked them to bring the iron to the mill we did yes these are probably those rattlings. Perfect. <laughs> I wonder how long it took them. <laughs> well, Looking the down, it looks very recent. Oh. I mean, recent, d- d- do I see tracks coming back the other way? No. Oh, they might still be there. <laughs> it might have taken them as long to drag that thing up here as it did for us to do everything. Clear out your tower, rest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good for them. They Good deserve... Them. Um, I don't know, a pat on the back? Yeah. We'll yeah. give them praise in the form of words. Cheap, easy to use words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds good for them. Yeah. They're, they follow a rather meandering path, occasionally dragging themselves into the side of a building or into a farmhouse, kind of going in a very erratic way <laughs> around trees, buildings, and back down back roads and on and off the street again. <laughs> um. As, as the pathway meanders its way towards the Eckerman Mill. I'm so proud. I'm actually <laughs> really proud of these guys. Way to go. I just imagine them like like the weight <laughs> kind of like them Ooh. trying to study it, but then they try to like make up for it and they tilt I think the they other way. It. 
Oh, it, yeah, it looks like they've been dragging it. Oh, they it. just like... Yeah, oh. no, I picture it in my head too. Like like a bunch of them, like tr- like balancing it. And there, there's it. moments where it seems like they attempted it, but dropped it several <laughs> times. Like they tried to carry it. And then at one point you come across a very smushed rat. Like, oh, oh, a casual No! Scene. no. <laughs> oh. I am... Uh, um, is his head intact? He is flat like a pancake. Oh, oh is it like roadkill? Because yeah. we get we get paid if we bring the hooded lanterns um, rattling heads. Just <laughs> just saying. I mean, they didn't say they couldn't be flat rattling heads. Yeah, there was no. I take the flat rattling head. <laughs> <laughs> How much do they get for a head? It looks like looking down at the smushed rattling. It looks like parts of him have been eaten, as if the rattlings might have cannibalized their own as well. Who's so, going to carry the all the heads that we have to collect? I don't. Oh, fine. Well, <laughs> Can I have a separate satchel for the heads? Let's <laughs> uh, find uh, a big backpack. <laughs> I just don't want to get it mixed with my other stuff. Here you go. Just put it in your food pouch. I carry the food pouch, so... Okay. okay I'll, I'll repurpose my food pouch. <laughs> I will carry your it's food. It's now a head pouch. Yeah, you can have rations. you can you can hang on to my rations. Oh, I'm want... dumping them out. Oh, into okay. You. <laughs> you won't trust me with your rations. That'll fine. go well. I <laughs> Everything do trust is you. fine. I do trust you, Veo. We won't lose all of our rations. <laughs> I won't be hungry. Veo. Veo. Um, we all need to eat. Okay. How far are we from the the mill? As we follow, only a the... few more miles from here. Okay. It's a short trek. Mm-hmm. Will River be mad if there's rats there? Do we know that? I mean, oh God! <laughs> <laughs> what if we I mean, show up and they're all dead? Because <laughs> and Rivers just like got rid of your rat problem. Oh, no. oh okay. Oh gosh, That's, I uh, forgot. Okay. I didn't think of that one. <laughs> but to be fair, that might solve like a couple problems all at once too. So we bring time. back the heads and oh get yeah. Some more money. <laughs> no, we need the ratlings. There are minions. Minion, you. Good I was word. gonna say friends, but I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> minions. <laughs> Servants. I'm As you continue down the road, the fog begins to give way. To, and you see ahead of you, surrounding the ruins of a farmhouse and past the dead horse of Drakenheim. <laughs> give it a kick good it? kick. I kick it. You can see a dozen soldiers in the street ahead. Several of them are jamming their weapons, their halberds and spears, down into several corpses in the mud in front of them. What what are they wearing? What armor, colors, banners? They're wearing the livery of Jupiter Jones. <sighs> Jupiter! Did you so, scream that out? Uh, yes. Yeah. I did yeah. that. I did the just I did the scream. Jupiter! Scream that out, and the men stop. There's about a dozen of them. And you can see coming from that the group is the man himself, Lord Jupiter Jones. He steps forward, wiping the blood off of his blade. And he beams and smiles and he says, Well, well, Pluto Jackson. Come to survey the scene of my latest victory, have you? What did you kill? Your confidence? Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Harold, uh, back me up. <laughs> yeah, you non-confident jerk. The, the rest of his men begin to muster up, including his gnomish Harold Lemmington Whithaf. <laughs> And the heavily armored half orc bodyguard, Bruce Dead Dog. And as they assemble in front of you, you can see that he, it's about a third of the number of men you encountered him with before. We can take him. You lose something, Jupiter? Only a trail of a fantastic treasure indeed. But the men needed to rest a moment while we. Sur- um, drank in the succor of our most recent victory over these vile rat folk. No. Oh, yes. We've been tracking a group of them 
dozens of them, in fact, they've been carrying some sort of strange idol to one of their vile, disgusting gods out into the hills, no doubt to perform some sort of profane ritual. We managed to isolate a few of them and cut them down like the rats they are. I, myself, slew ten of them. My men, not so many others, but we have done well this day. It is a valiant fight. We're still tracking them ourselves. They've taken refuge in the hills over yonder. Jupiter Jones. You are the worst. What pest control? Uh, are you going to be trimming the hedges of uh, Castle Drakenheim next? <laughs> well, as you can see, I brought some of my more recent recruits out with me and training them against these rat folk is excellent to test their mettle for the horrors of the inner city. I absolutely must thank you. We found quite a bounty on our first foray. A great mountain of treasure, indeed. I, s I sent you to the dragon horde, and you found it. No, we, we didn't quite find it, but we did find this noble's mansion, and the vaults were still intact, and they had letters of credit, mountains of gold. It was incredible by Jove. Jupiter, that, that's the horde I sent you after. Well, fantastic! We have claimed it by Caspia's honor and in the name of House Jones. Uh, that's fantastic. We'll take our 25% then. Excuse me, what? We we sent you to retrieve that gold. That yeah. was you were under our orders to, to find it. <laughs> Specifically your prince. <laughs> <laughs> and all the men burst out laughing and they continue to laugh. Oh, you're not a man of honor. Oh. Ooh. I thought we had an agreement that you were going to go retrieve that gold. Did we now? I thought so. Do you happen to have it in writing? It was a gentleman's agreement. But you're not much of a gentleman, are you, Jupiter? He straightens his neck and pulls up. Straightens himself up and pulls up his uh, armor and sheaths his blade, crosses his arms, and says, A gentleman's honor is only due to a fellow gentleman. And when I look at you, I just see a cur. So I gave you the whereabouts of treasure. You find it, and you come back and insult me for leading you straight to it. You did a fine job. If you wish, we'll buy you some beer next time we see you in Emberwood Village. The biggest beer I've ever seen. It better be huge. <gasps> God damn it. Listen, I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but I mean, killing ratlings to, to make your soldiers strong for the inner city is, is child's play compared to what Pluto's been up to in the inner city. Yeah. Tell him, Pluto. Yeah, we, uh, I killed a cube. And I killed uh, some gnolls and some harpies. And I got this wicked javelin. And then I uh, met with the commander and we put on a play. <laughs> and that's all royalty. Because as you would know, if you were a noble, um, part of uh, your duties to represent Caspia are to um, perform and to give fellow Caspians 50% uh, of all treasure found. That's part of international Caspia rule. You would know. You would know. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> Should I cast a spell? And by what force are you enforcing Caspian law here in the lawless lands of Vestemar? You should tattletale on to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Just run back to Caspia and go in and tell all the other noble families that you ran headlong with your tail between your legs instead of matting up and taking the treasures of the city for yourself. In this place, there are no rules, there are no laws, and they're only the only spoils are those you can claim for yourself. Does that mean we can shoot him? I um, I turn, <laughs> I turn, and I start. Um, I turn to face you, so that my back's facing Jupiter, and I just quietly, um, are you better than him? 
I'm better than everyone. Okay, okay. They're not better than but me. Are you better than him? Yes. Where you Jupiter. Where are you close? <laughs> Sorry, fam. You've done excellent work here, slaying these helpless ratlings and finding that <laughs> treasure. Indeed, we have, and we've got more to track down. You're wasting our time at this moment. These are our rats. I thought we were under an agreement for part of the treasure. Uh, Pluto seems to think that we were under an agreement for part of the treasure. Perhaps a wager is in order. A contest. A contest. What do you have in mind? Well, Pluto, what are you best at? Uh, tracking ratlings. No, that's what I'm best at. <laughs> You're part of the team. That's what you want the contest to be? You don't want to kill ratlings. the ratlings. Yeah. Uh, I bet we could find the ratlings before you do. Ha! Huh. Mm, that's true, probably. That Our best three versus your best three. Well, I challenge you, then. We shall go after our quarry. And whichever man slays more ratlings no. shall be the winner of this contest. No, Pluto. find them. Finding no, them is we, the contest. We're going to find them. Not slaying <laughs> them. Finding them? He points to the deep groove in the Uh-oh. in the road. That is the, the idol that they're dragging along with them. I'm sure it's loaded with delirium and all sorts of other treasures. Try again, Pluto. Try again. It's not loaded with delirium. And once we get there... We already have that. <laughs> If you think, I'll even get you, give you the first pass. How does that sound? You can go in on your own, slay as many rattlings as you think you can, and once you've had your fill, then I'll do beat your number. I'm sure you can't last as long against two dozen rattlings as I can. Pluto, I have an idea. Do it. I accept. <laughs> Fantastic. Follow the trail. We get a head start. We don't have to go together, right? We can go before you. You said we can go first. No funny business. We will march along together. But we go into In the building first. Yes, indeed. We will follow where, the ratlings where? and wherever we find them. You can have your first. You can have the first round. <laughs> You're going to need it. Okay. Team huddle. <laughs> <laughs> team, team huddle. You just like huddle in. And he turns to his, his men. <laughs> Come, men. There's more rattlings to slay, but you'll get another little bit of a rest before you get to sharpen your blades and test your metal once again. These fools want to have their little fun first. The contest is to kill more rat, rat folk than they do. By the way, what are the terms of the wager? Oh. What, what, is, what is at stake? If we win, you give us 50% of the treasure you found. And whatever we find that they were dragging. And whatever we find that we were dragging. That they were dragging. If we lose... They get whatever they were dragging. You get whatever they were dragging. And... This ring. It's a magic ring. I want the javelin. No, no. no. <laughs> if you don't wager the javelin, nothing. We'll go ahead and we'll take them on ourselves. <laughs> it's your call. All right. I pull out the javelin. Oh, God, I hope my plan works. <laughs> <laughs> my herald I mean, By says, Zeus, <laughs> that is a fine weapon. I, I look forward to wielding it. Me too. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay. Team huddle, so that Jupiter can't hear. Uh, <laughs> team huddle. We team still have that flattened rat head. Yeah. We need to kill more than he does. If we can convince him to let us go in first, we help the rat folk escape through like a back hole or something. We even blow a back hole. They all escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jupiter walks in. We throw the one rat head down and we say there was only one in here and we killed him. That's more than you. We um, That's my plan. That's okay. a good plan. I was going to say alternatively. Um, I mean, we can talk to the ratlings or at least I can speak with... They, they talk. They I talk, talk. Then we can just convince them to, like, play dead. But what if Jupiter confirms? Oh, well, that's not. I also okay, thought my plan's not as good as your plan. 
I, I was thinking we set up an ambush and help the Redlings attack Jupiter Jones. I, I don't but feel, maybe but that's a little yeah. easy. I don't feel like we want to kill the other Caspians. Like, we've been killing monsters. We haven't really gotten into killing. No, I guess we killed some Queensmen. We ate fish people. <laughs> Those are monsters. I can't turn back now. <laughs> this is who I am. Are you saying you're going to eat Jupiter? Look, I'm just not saying I, I mean, won't eat you, but I okay. haven't said that. I don't want to, but like alternatively, we can just kill the rattlings. I mean, that's worst case scenario. Okay, worst case scenario. Um, during the group huddle, I go, okay, on three, we're gonna run. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you want me to? You're gonna be like illusion. Do you want me to spells? mess? Yes, we could run. Why don't we just make an illusion? I can't make an illusion that big. Uh, well, how does I'm not that powerful. Big. What, what kind of illusions can you make? <laughs> Little ones. <laughs> Jupiter and his contingent are. Marching along, oh, following. Oh. Wait, do the little wait, run and catch wait, up. Wait, come up. I mean, wait, wait up. Come up. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Okay. Come on. Come on. Alongside Jupiter and his men, you follow the trail of the Ratlings into the Karen Hills along the the a muddy road. Where you come to an intersection in the roads. There's a copse of trees, some marshland, several burnt out and ruined farmhouses. And ahead of you, you can see in a low hill, at the top of a low hill, are the burnt out ruins of what might have been once a farmhouse or a small cottage. And in the center of this farmhouse is an overturned wagon on a mound of dirt. And poking out from inside some little windows that have been broken into the sides of the wagon, Bailey, you can see that there are several ratlings pointing their crossbows out from underneath the uh, the underneath the wagon, and they are shooting their crossbows because lumbering towards the carts and banging their fists against it are two truly massive creatures they are covered in thick knob knobby bits of flesh they're only wearing bits of cloth and loincloth they have these large hooked noses and on the backs of their shoulders are actually bits of what look like pieces of the meteoric iron and bits of delirium poking out of it their arms are long and lanky and covered in almost what look like spines and claws that end in sharpened fingers. And the two of them are kind of circling around it. Um, one of them is gnawing on half of a rattling as the others kind of, they circle the wagon and once in a while one of the rattlings shoots at one of the, these big creatures and they rumble backwards. Paluto, you recognize these creatures. They're trolls. Jupiter, I'd like to change our wager. <laughs> he eyes them up. He says, these disgusting creatures. You said we could have first run at them. We change it from rats to trolls? Forget the rats, Jupiter. We're after them. This is a much worthier competition. Rats are nothing compared to this. He... He smiles and says, All right, Pluto. You fought trolls. You think you can take those two trolls by yourself? <laughs> Do we? Like by himself or by ourself? He's a valiant warrior and monster slayer. Why does he need your help? Because it's fun. I thought this was a three versus three. I need... I turn, I turn to Sebastian. I need fire. <laughs> what leader goes on without their companions? What what good is a leader without their men? I can take those trolls by myself. No sweat. Should, you, you know should what? I got it better. How about whoever kills their troll first? You get one. He gets one. You know what? Jupiter. I think you're right. I think you could take both those trolls on by yourself. 
I could. And I, I could absolutely. And I want to see it. I also want to see it. Sure, I'll see it. <laughs> You're going to give me the first crack at fighting these trolls? Absolutely. You know what? I just wish I was as strong and as capable a warrior as you. And he, hopefully he, I could learn something says, from wait. such a fine Caspian leader. You're pathetic. You're already giving up. You're oh. conceding the field to me. That's oh. pathetic. You're a coward. You're just hoping that I'll get beaten up by those trolls so you can finish them off on your own. You're hoping the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the... Trolls regenerate. If you can't kill them, they'll just heal themselves back up. They'll be fine. I suggest you go first, and I cast suggestion. Okay. Make it, and how are you going to conceal the trappings of casting the spell? How do you cast it? I have to do a verbal component, which is beyond just... Put your mask on. (laughs) I, I put my devil mask on. And start mumbling underneath it. Okay, you can make a deception check with disadvantage. <laughs> That's a nine. Um, as you begin uttering the incantations of the spell, Lemmington Whithalf says, Are you trying to magic him up? Hmm? Are you trying to cheat by mind controlling him somehow? Why do you think he's got me around? Hmm? Oh, I don't like you. <laughs> hey, it's your nemesis. <laughs> Lemmington. He and Lemmington says, listen, I think the two of you should each take a troll on and we can all see which of you is truly stronger. Pluto, remember, you can use your torch. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can take a troll on. You can. And you when can. I win, you're going to give me half the treasure. Jupiter, or are you uh, too I'm scared? not afraid of fighting trolls. One troll, even easier than fighting two. I would fight three trolls. Oh, man. He's so cool. Yeah, I think you're a bit full of yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> man, he's, man, three trolls? <laughs> I, do, I don't show my... I would like one stipulation. If... The battle gets too rough for both of you. I'm not saying it will because you're both so amazing. Um, if it gets too rough and you both agree to have your friends join in, both of you are allowed to have your comrades join. Sounds a good idea. We don't want anybody dying today. Hmm. Make a persuasion check. Uh, that is... 27? So be it. But the first one to call for aid from their compatriots forfeits the match. Oh, well. I agreed. And uh, I'm going to give a strong, Caspian. firm Caspian. Caspian handshake. Okay. <laughs> that was a handshake. So, how will you approach the situation? The Jupiter Jones steps forward. He draws his blade, eyes the trolls, which are still several hundred feet away. You can see them still beating down on the on the cart. They haven't caught sight of your groups yet. How will the two of you... He, he says to you, well, how are we going to separate them? Draw them off. I'm going to start walking towards them, and I'll follow my lead. All right. Light a torch. And uh, I'm going to uh, start yelling out at the trolls. Cool. So hey, he's got this. Hey, right? hey, you, you <laughs> big dumb brutes. <laughs> he's got this. <laughs> All righty. You cry out at them, and they they turn up, and they go, Rah! and you hear one of them say, "Oi, man flesh." 
tastes like pork. Grog, let's get him. And, Much uh, better than these bony rattlings. And then, uh, is I, I'm assuming I'm on the left, and Jackson's on my right. Yeah. And uh, I, I just motion to Jackson, you can take uh, Ugly, and I'll take uh, Harry. Wait, you're Jackson. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, I'm Jack. So you're gonna Jupiter you're gonna Joe. fight Jupiter. Harry, Harry, and and you're and he's gonna fight Ugly. Yeah, Ugly's on the right, Harry's on the left. Fine. Try not to die too quickly. Hey, it's same to you. Pluto, try not to die too quickly. Yeah, he Pluto, just told don't me. Don't die! To, don't guys, die! He's telling, he told me the same advice. Do you have any other advice? Okay. <laughs> no. Light a torch. <laughs> Already. <laughs> I keep just shouting that at you. Just, just light a torch. <laughs> Remember that last time you killed a troll. You've told me about it 12 times. Okay. I'm so worried for you. <laughs> I can And just everyone, start. I will have you all roll for initiative. Oh, yes. Uh-oh. And I'll just uh, kind of show it, uh, set up a little bit on our map here. I am pacing back and forth, by the way. I, I'm going to maybe try to interfere with him. Don't cheat. Why not? Because then he'll lose his javelin. Not if he doesn't know I cheated. Well, it's not him needing to know. It's the other one. Then he seems to be a little bit more Lemington. sly. You distract Lemmington. Let me cast some spells. Um, I have spells that are not easy to notice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pluto Jackson is well aware that he is under... <laughs> No, under equipped this. to you deal with this. the troll. <laughs> but Use your but I can't I can't not back down from Do this. it for the ratlings. I'm doing it for the ratlings. We need them as servants, remember. Which one are you taking on? Uh the left one, Harry. The l- one on the left? Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is this <laughs> Jupiter? <laughs> yes, that's Jupiter Jones. He wears he's light so cool. chainmail armor, and he's kind of got his dashing hair run, running back. His, he's got those wide, pompous sleeves as well over his chainmail armor. He is dashing. Okay, so we will roll for initiative. I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yay. Well, it gives me an eight. <laughs> what? What? Okay. I was just like, I have a play over the rattlings. What do we got? So Who's first? I uh, got 18. Ooh. I got an 8. I got 11. Blue Jackson's ready. He's so ready. Use your tablet. <sighs> so good. I'm going to stab him so many times. Okay, so going up first, we're going to have Pluto, then Jupiter, then Sebastian, then the Trolls, then Veo, then Jupiter's men. In case there's any interference. Mm. (laughs) Okay. Pluto, you see the two Trolls, their hulking forms lumbering towards you as the one Troll finishes biting off the head of a rattling that that it had and, and swallows it down and yells out and it says... Come on then, manling. You taste like pork. I'm going to have bacon for for the rest of the evening. We're going to eat you all, men. Oh. And I understood all of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to throw a javelin at you. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to flank this way. And okay. I'm going to do that. And I huck a javelin at him. And I get a, a sixteen. The javelin you, you're throwing lightning? Uh no, not yet. Okay. The javelin soars forward, striking the tr- troll soundly in the chest with a large, with a deep, like shrunk sort of noise. That's what I wanted. There was a question. Does the dueling add when I throw it? No. Yes. Yes. I think it might just be melee attacks. We'll just say 
No, because I don't okay. need that help. Okay. Uh, but it was five damage, and I needed that help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then what will you do? Um, and then I'm going to draw my sword and run at him. Okay. And attack him again. Go for it. Da, da, da. The javelin flies back to your hand, or are you leaving it embedded in him? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, 25. <laughs> oh, yeah. To hit for uh, 11 damage. Nice. So as you rush up towards the troll, you slice the front of it open, and it reels back and just reaches out its hands and kind of tucks them back together like it's tucking its shirt back in <laughs> as it starts to knit itself, already starting to regenerate. Damn. Anything else, Pluto? No, that's everything. Okay. Lord Jupiter Jones leaps forward, uh, his blade flashing in the air. And as he, he leaps forward, he has his blade in one hand and a, uh, and a torch in the other. And he takes the flashing blade and attacks the troll, slicing deeply into it with, with, its, with his sword and then bashing it with the, with the torch. It looks like the troll takes about 20 points of damage. Oh, man. He's already doing so much better than me. He's and the troll, <laughs> the, the troll <laughs> goes, Oh, no, fire! And says, Ugh, you got the you got the dumb one. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Stop making fun of me, troll. Okay. Uh, Sebastian, you're up. I'm going to see if this works. Um, I'm going to grab Veo, and I'm going to point towards Jupiter, and I'm going to be like, Look at look at how awesome he's doing over there. And while I'm pointing, I'm going to cast Mold Earth to try to excavate the ground. Not excavate, but move the ground underneath Jupiter's feet, causing him to trip. Cool. I'll give him a dexterity saving throw. Ooh. Which he fails and he <laughs> falls and the earth kind of shakes. Uh, and he slides to his feet and lands uh, head against the stone wall in front of him. Yes. Uh, and says, oh, this muddy ground. Pluto, you seized the better ground, I think. Uh, totally. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> so, I'm so uh, distracted. And as he falls, but he manages to keep his torch lit. Uh, Pluto, use fire. Fire? Fire. Fire good? You're the one who's fought trolls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the trolls go next. There's a the mighty troll in front of you, lumbering, uh, snarls out, brings his his claws down, rakes them across you, Pluto. Ow. Getting a 23 and a 10 to hit with the claws. So the 23 hits. The claw comes down and rents into your shoulder for 11 points of slashing damage, and he pulls himself forward to bite at you, getting a thirteen to hit. That's a miss, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stab into his beauty, beautiful mouth um, uh, for a twenty four to hit. Cool. So as he comes down to bite you, you just stab him in the mouth. Stab the blade the goes mouth. right through through the the creature's mouth for how much damage? Uh, Eleven damage. Nice. And you pull the blade back, and its mouth is starting to stitch together a little bit. You can see that it is clearly regenerating from the damage that you've dealt. The other troll that has been damaged by Jupiter Jones does not. Its regeneration hindered by the burning flames of the torch. Nevertheless, seeing oh, him fire. Fall, fall to the is ground. Is that what you meant? <laughs> it <laughs> claws deeply into Jupiter Jones, hitting him once twice before biting him in the shoulder and Jupiter and just savages Jupiter Jones who tries to parry uh, parry the blows but cannot Jupiter Jones takes a total of 29 points of damage Woo! go Harry go no ugly go ugly go ugly U G L Y you ain't got no about you ugly okay Veo it's your turn <laughs> okay <laughs> Veo, you, you can ugly. see that as the f as now that the fighting has started, several of the ratlings are poking their heads out from the cart to watch, oh, God. and you see in 
poking out his head is none other than the rat prince. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's, he sees you and he's like, oh, oh ghost. And he like points at his eyes, points back at you. Hello, can you save us? <laughs> I just, just get back in there. <laughs> Don't get die! Down, get down! I don't want him to die. <laughs> um, but I see him, and I'm like, okay, you're not my first priority. Uh, getting fire to Pluto is my first priority. Um, so I have a torch. Would I take an action to to light it? Um, you could light it and throw it towards Pluto as yeah as an action. Yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> I I do that. I light the torch and I say, Pluto, this, and I toss it at him. <laughs> okay, make an acrobatics check. All right. Now, Pluto, your hands are full. So you've got a tor- your shield in one hand and your sword in another. Uh, and you've spent your reaction. So you're not going to be able to grab this. 13. But it lands at your feet still lit. It kind of lands and kind of knocks itself into the wooden fence uh, sorry the stone fence okay uh, s- sitting there perfectly gen- uh, uh, sitting there gently <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> and then still gesturing to the rat prince like get inside the thing <laughs> oh <laughs> okay now we go to Jupiter's men Lemington uh, sees that sees the torch and he casts Mage Hand and grabs the torch and moves it to the uh, to, to the other side of the no! <laughs> of the of the fence. Ten. And then and then he turns to you and says, um, and he sticks his tongue out. Yeah, <laughs> no cheating. And he turns back to Paluto and yells out, Pluto, you smell really awful and you're going to die. Make oh, a charisma saving no! throw. No. I'm gonna Please. shoot this guy. He's cheating. Yeah, he's cheating. Uh, fifteen. Okay, you manage to um, resist Lemmington's taunts, oh. and you will not have disadvantage on attack rolls for the, your next turn. Yes, but the torch is now not where it needs to be. Um, the torch is now on the other side of the fence. Right there. Okay. Okay. Okay, we go to the top of the round with Paluto. Um, following Veo's lead, I have my own aha moment. <laughs> and <laughs> I throw my sword to the ground, and I'm going to pull out a torch. <laughs> okay, you pull out the torch. It's not lit. Uh, I light it. Okay, that will be an action to light the torch. And then can I still hit him with it or no? You got to light the torch. Ooh, okay. I'm going to light the torch. Okay. And then I'm going to shield slam the troll onto the ground. You got to take oh, wait, the attack no. action to... to uh, yeah. Friggin... Uh, I'm going to light the torch. Okay. You light your torch I do up. that. Okay. <laughs> your sword is on the ground. You lit the torch. Oh, wait. Then I'm going to action surge. Nice. And then I'm going to start wailing on him. <laughs> nice. Okay. So the That's torch is an do. improvised uh, weapon that does 1d6 fire, uh, that does 1d4 fire damage uh, plus your strength mod. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, and I go. You don't em. add your proficiency modifier to the attack roll with it. I'm going to light him up. Whoa, I miss. <laughs> uh, I get a, a nine to hit. So you. Gr- Lighting up the torch and action surging, you swipe the torch towards the troll who leaps backwards with unearing dexterity. And then I'm going to swing at him again. Okay. And I'm going to swing at him for a miss. <laughs> <laughs> so you're kind of like, the, torch is like uh, the, the troll oh. seeing the torch waving at him is like, ah, starting to so kind of back off. like keeping him back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Golf claps. Jupiter yeah, Jones gets to his terrible, feet. Terrible roll. Pats himself off. Looks looks at his wounds. He fights himself to to his feet and begins attacking the troll again. Slicing with his long sword. He manages to hit the troll only once. 
And then he tries to swipe with his torch and misses wide. So he lunges forward to his feet, stabs the troll who pull, who pushes him backwards as he tries to hit the troll with his torch but misses with the attack. The troll only takes eight points of damage and will probably regenerate on its turn. <laughs> Sebastian, you are up. Oh, man. Where's uh, Lemmington? Lemmington's oh. right beside you. I, I turned to Lemmington. Of me. I turned to Lemmington and I'm like, I thought you said no cheating. It's not cheating to cheer for your for your the winning team or insult the losers. You cast a spell. You cast a spell to move the torch that she threw as a cheater. Okay, so the rules are no interfering with their battle. Clearly, but those rules have been clearly broken now. I cast web and I web Lemmington to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's better than smack him. He utterly fails his dexterity saving throw, and you web him uh, up. Uh, we'll say we'll, we'll, you web him to the rocks, and he's like, "Ah, gross! <laughs> Get it off!" Oh, and and the men in Bruce Dead Dog are like, "That's uncalled for." He's not injured. We're just making sure there's no interference. He'll be fine. Make a persuasion check. Uh, that is... 17. Bruce Dead Dog lowers his, uh, arm, his weapons and says, Can you at least make sure some of the webs cover his mouth so he shuts up for five minutes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the man goes... <laughs> <laughs> they get it. They get it. They, they, yeah, they get it. Okay. Nice. We go now to the trolls. The first troll hammers away at Paluto. It moves to attack you, Paluto. And as you wave the torches in front of it, it kind of like w- waves its arms back at you. <laughs> And it it wants to approach to attack you, but as you're waving the torch in front of it, it's just too. It's almost terrified of the flame. Yeah. And it doesn't manage to land a single blow. The the only attack that comes in, you're able to push aside with your shield. And I'm going to repost it with yeah. my torch. I'm going to try to while he's distracted, hit him with the old uh, fifteen. That hits for. Oh wait, sorry. Uh... A one point of fire damage, and lost your mod. Yeah, eleven point. Oh, so five points of damage okay. with the torch, and eleven with the with the rest of just regular damage. Okay. So that at, as I you it as it his... attacks forward, you're able to smash it in the the wounds that you inflicted before. Inhibiting its regeneration uh, for this turn. Yeah. As well, and getting some damage on the board. The other troll rips into Jupiter Jones. Scoring another pair of hits with its claws as it slashes into Jupiter Jones. He takes another 22 points of damage and he is bloodied. Oh, he's hurting. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll finesse. No, uh, no shields there, eh, Jupiter? <laughs> he, he, uh, he, battered Jupiter looks looks back towards you and says, I've got this under control. It's fine. It's don't, fine. Don't let your pride get in the way. You can yield at any time. He grits his teeth. Next up, uh, that was the troll, so we've got Veo. Um, is the rat prince still in view, or did he go hide? Um, make a perception check. 16. The rat prince has clambered out of the wagon and is in the is has managed to sneak over to the trees <laughs> and is slowly slinking away. Um and and sees that you see it's like hello cat. <laughs> and I I do the same and I say and I kind of motion to her and I'm like pew pew 
and I point to the troll uh, for uh, Pluto, and then I point to the other troll, and I say, no pew pew, no pew pew, pew pew. And the, then the, the rat prince sees you pointing and then points at the other people like, <laughs> no, no, troll, troll, no. pew pew. And I point again to the, the, the big troll near Pluto. I'm and like, he tries to mime back at you, and he mimes like the stitching motion. And, and like he points at the trolls, and mimes the stitching motion, points at the humans, and then mi- mimes out m- motion. <laughs> and it's still no. <laughs> and I and I shout. I just say, "Your ghosts command you." <laughs> <laughs> and I make the shooting motion towards the troll. Okay, make an intimidation check with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> so you scream out and the rat prince dives down in, into the brushes. <laughs> but seeing that all of Jupiter Jones's men go they they all kind of everyone simultaneously looks at you like you're crazy. She speaks to ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like Don't worry about me. <laughs> I'm just hungry, okay? This is what happens. When I'm nervous and I'm hungry, I just have words. Words. What else would you like to do, Vale? Um, I, I'm going to ready an action with my uh, crossbow uh, that if any of the men start advancing behind me um, in a menacing way, I want to be ready with it. I'm just like I don't trust these guys (laughs) okay Jupiter Jones's men just look at you and they and Lemmington's in the in the webs kind of ensnared and he tries to break his way out and he gets a 12 on a strength check (laughs) and you can hear him underneath underneath muffled through his voice you can hear him saying uttering a string of profanities you stupid elf! <laughs> Half elf. <laughs> um, and we go to the top of the round with Paluto. All right, so I, I hit him with some fire. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what I want to do. I want to drop the torch. Mm-hmm. I want to pull the javelin out mm-hmm. and then jam it back in. Cool. Go for it. Uh, 19. <laughs> you got it. So you rush up to the troll. As he's backing away from the torch, you throw the torch on the ground in front of him, leap forward, grab the javelin, pull it out, and stab it back into him. Uh, for uh, 8, no, 7 damage. Okay. And then what? And then uh, I'm going to stab him with it again. Okay, go for it. Actually, this time... No, this time I want to take... I want to I wanna step back five feet. I'm going to let him take a, a swing at me. Okay, so you step out of his, his area. He swipes at you, getting a 16 to hit. Miss, so I duck out of the way. And then I'm going to lightning... <laughs> <laughs> Throw the javelin at him? Right, okay. like almost point blank. Sounds good. Uh, getting a, uh, an 18 to hit. He utterly fails his dexterity saving throw as well against the lightning. Oh, yeah. And I go, uh, Harry, I'm going to make your hair stand on end. That was pretty good, right? Was, <laughs> was that okay? And you like turn over your shoulder. Like, is that good? Is that good? Is that good? <laughs> Uh, five out of ten. It's good. <laughs> Six out of ten. Five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah. Uh, we hold up the signs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twenty. So here's 20. what I here's what I imagine. You throw the torch on the ground in front of the troll. S- leap forward onto him. Pull the javelin back. Stab it into him really quickly and push off of him, and oh. then throw the javelin in midair. <laughs> yeah, and it just with a thunderous bolt, like, 
this bolt of lightning strikes the troll for how much damage total? Uh, 20. Pretty weak, but... That leaves the troll bloodied. Yeah! <clears throat> Anything else, Pluto? Uh, and then I retrieve the javelin. <laughs> <laughs> so it rips its way out. Nice. Uh, yeah. Alrighty, javelin in hand. We go to... Oh, Jupiter. wait, can I ask one thing? Yeah. Sorry, uh... I can still shield slam him and stuff, right? You'd have to move right up back up to I'm him. I'm going to run back up to him. I'm going <laughs> to hit him. Okay. Go for it. Yes, Pluto. Uh, 19. He's knocked on his feet. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to stand over him. Nice. Menacingly. Nice. Like I'm going to finish off the troll. <laughs> okay. Jupiter Jones. Hoo -ah. Redoubles his Redoubling his attack against the troll. Launches into a cavalcade of attacks, but only hits with his longsword attack and again misses with the the torch. So, so he stabs forward and the troll dives out of the way as the torch comes down to where its head was. So he only inflicts eight damage on his troll. Veo, yeah, you have you got you got it. You <laughs> and we go to Sebastian. Um Sebastian starts, turns to Veo as if uh, he's talking to her and it's just like, starts mumbling stuff about the torch and a little mage hand appears and takes Pluto's torch that he had thrown on the ground and just sticks it into the troll a little bit. Most of the men are looking at Veo like she's crazy and have taken their eyes off the fight for a brief moment. If you make a deception check, you'll be able to move the torch unnoticed. Ooh. <laughs> do it, do it. Oh, this, this is my magic dice. <laughs> <laughs> it was not the most magical. Fifteen. Seems like no one saw you move the torch back over, and you drop it right beside the troll. Can it like be touching the troll so that he's kind of singed, just a little? Sure, make an attack roll. Oh, what Who's am I got? adding? Your spellcasting ability modifier. Sweet. 21. So you may lift the torch up with Mage Hand and <laughs> drop it on the troll and it lands in its face. <laughs> I'm going to say it deals one point of fire damage to the troll, but that's, that's enough to cut off its regeneration. Yeah. Um, cool. <laughs> Anything else, Sebastian? Um, I look over at Lem and I wink. L Lemmington definitely saw that happen <laughs> but he's like <laughs> <laughs> next up are the trolls the trolls Pluto your troll scampers to his feet and cries out I'm gonna kill you manling uh oh and manages to land one attack with a 22 to hit. Uh, I accept. I accept the hit. <laughs> the, the troll's fist, as it comes up from the ground, wallops you in the face oh. for 12 points of damage. And again, I'm going to repost his other attacks. Cool. Uh, a 16 to hit. It hits. For 12 damage. With the old uh, stabby spear. Nice. Stabby, stabby. And sorry, how much damage did I take? 12 yourself. The other troll rips into Pluto, uh, Pluto's friend uh, and rival, <laughs> Jupiter Jones. We have an on-off relationship. And doesn't land a single hit. Oh, no. nuts. And ah, nuts. Jupiter Jones deftly dodges each incoming wallop. Flecks of dirt fly up around him as he spins around. We go to Vale. So at this point, I know I probably can't get away with anything without them seeing. So I figure I can try to distract them more. So I turn around with crossbow in hand, start waving it around, being like, well, it's about time that your guy got into it. And I start getting up in the big guy's face, waving my crossbow around. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know why you're following this clown, because obviously we can see who the better fighter is here. 
and I just try to get as much attention from them as I can. Okay. The uh, make a performance check. Ooh. Oh. Put on your fire truck hat. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, you said fire truck hat. Four. <laughs> it could be both. Ooh. Four. <laughs> they. Um. They look at you and they say, "She's been touched by the delirium. She's gone bonkers." <laughs> and they they focus back on the they they turn. They, he kind of pushes you aside and says, "Out of my way, cat." Rude. Got to keep an eye on Jupiter Jones. Good try. Rude. I'm like, crap. <laughs> uh, and the men cry, looking, seeing Jupiter Jones' situation, they say, Lord Jones, shall we intervene? And Jupiter Jones says, no, no, I've got it. I've got this. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Situation normal. <laughs> Let me go to the top of the round with Pluto. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep stabbing. I pull my uh, after the last attack. I, I jam it into his like leg or something. So I pull it out and I go to just keep driving it home. I'm, I'm not gonna let this guy, cool. this troll, live another moment. Twenty-two for uh, eight damage. You bury it in its leg and it falls to its knees. It's still alive. And then uh, I'm going to remove the spear and try to go for what I believe is the finishing blow. Okay. But it might not be. But time will tell. Uh, do, 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 do. 15. That hits. For 10 damage. So you swipe wide with the spear, decapitating the troll <laughs> with the, the broad head of the spear. Yeah. It, the, the head falls to the ground, but the body's still moving and reaching at the head and, and now starts looking for where the head is on the ground. And the Troll's like, you fool, This last time this happened, it took us two weeks to find the head, to get it, me reattached. Anything else you'd like to do? I want to bonus shove the body away from the head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I get advantage because he has no head? It would be actually easier to kick the head away from the body. Uh, okay. Yeah. You could, can I just do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just boot the head at Jupiter Jones. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> I give him a big. I go. Here's a little present for you. All right. I thought you said you could Make take a on strength two. check. Uh, seventeen. So basically, you kind of punt using your shield. You punt the troll's head. Actually, here's what I imagine. You slice through the troll's neck, and then you take the side of your shield to tee it off. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. And it flies and lands uh, right past Jupiter Jones, and the troll's body is, like, moving towards it. But it's still very much alive, and so is the head, as the head continues to scream at the body. <laughs> so, um, it is now over to Jupiter Jones. Um... Jupiter Jones, seeing the head land on the ground in, in front of it, um, he and seeing the, the troll in front of him, says, What, are you giving it me two trolls to kill? I've got, I've got my hands full over here. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> and he attacks the troll. Only landing one hit, just with his torch this time. Ooh. His troll is bloodied, but so is he. You go to Sebastian. Um, I, I turn around and I say, this is really an opportune time, but I have to go pee-pee. <laughs> 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 and I walk over to the bushes and I turn back to them again and I go, well, don't look. <laughs> Make a deception check with this Disadvantage. That yeah, was brilliant. That, they're they're like, why aren't you going over to the trees? It's more private there. I don't want to walk that far. Okay, do it. Disadvantage. <laughs> Thirteen. They say, well, whip it out then. Let's see. <laughs> You're gonna pee all in front of us. Hmm? 
And, and the, the troll says, I thought the, the only pissing match was between Jones and Jackson up over there. All right, fine. I'm going somewhere more private. And I go and I start peeing on, <laughs> on Lemmington. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and as I'm doing that under my arm I'm going to shoot a firebolt at the troll's body do you think could I do that without being noticed not a chance not a chance okay I'm going to try to mage hand the torch again okay the the torch is over by the troll's body is, is basically like in the troll space um go for uh, um so you've walked over you are, are are actually relieving yourself? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, you can control your mage hand with a bonus action, so that's that's fine. Go so for it. Another attack roll with it or Yeah, yeah. You wanna go for the troll's body? Um Yeah. I'm just gonna like grab the torch and I know that like I know that Mage Hand can't be used to cause damage. But you can pick it up and drop it. I can pick up a flaming torch and. And I can and I I can do it too if you want. If if. Uh, so do you want me to just like move the torch into your hands? <laughs> just like, give just it to put me. Put it in your hand. Put it under my arm. Yeah. Or do you, no? I'll try to I'll try to drop it on him. Okay. I get an eighteen. The torch lands in the troll's space, but the troll's body manages <laughs> to avoid it. Yeah, oh. You might want to pick that up, Pluto. <laughs> and I finish peeing on Lemon. Okay. Uh, we go to the trolls. That's a pretty good it's the a skill. Troll, the, the troll's body regenerates a little bit, and you can see like this kind of secondary head starting to grow Uh-oh. on it. And, but it, the body like starts walking towards where you kick the head of uh, its head and it provokes an opportunity attack from you. Uh, and I try to nail it to the ground. Okay. Oh, I only got a nine. You miss as you swipe it, swipe away from it. It walks back towards, uh, it continues walking towards where its head is and tries to pick it up and is, is putting it back on it, stitching no! the head back on. no. And it's surrounding Jupiter Jones. And as, as the head kind of falls back into place, uh, it looks it looks down and says, and sees Jupiter Jones in front of it. And it looks like the troll is going to go, like both the trolls are going to attack Jupiter Jones. Uh-oh. The other troll presses his attack against Jupiter. Scoring three hits. Oh, no. Uh And it picks Jupiter Jones up, bites deeply into him, and throws him against the ground, and Jupiter Jones lands unconscious and dying on the ground. I'm not too mad about it. And the men gasp. (gasps) We go to to now Veo. Um, I think we won. We have to save Jupiter. Yeah, I actually run uh, using my feline agility over to Jupiter and give him a health <gasps> okay actually wait no I heal him with my healer's kit okay go for it uh, the, the check is automatically successful so you stabilize him move the other troll right over by, by him as well the, tr- the two trolls see this and they're like oi this ain't a game anymore. Let's just kill them all. It was a game. Oh, God. Ah. Okay. This is real. It's so real. Jupiter's men, um, they rush forward as well towards the trolls. Oh, let's get them. Save the, our Lord. They all yell out. Oh no, Jupiter! Top of the round with Pluto. The 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 sportsmanship of the game uh, starts to become pale in comparison to the danger that we now face. And uh, I'm gonna s- stick the spear in the ground. And I'm gonna pick up the torch and I'm gonna run and stab the troll that I beheaded in the back. Okay, go for it. Of the 
back. Uh, 17. That is a hit. For, oh, wait, no. Wrong one. Classic back of the back. <laughs> Give him the old back, back in the back. Uh, eight damage. Alrighty. Give me one more good hit. Give him daddy what he wants. Uh, for, uh, 17. How do you kill or, a sorry, troll? sorry, uh, it would have been 15. How do you slay this troll? I slay this troll by re-decapitating him with a torch. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the head is trying to stick back on. So you yeah. path the, the <laughs> troll's head off and then light the uh, light the stump on fire. Like separating a pancake yeah. that's not quite together. like Or eggs in a pan. Like you know how like they start to run together. You can just run <laughs> it quickly through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to get together. And the troll falls to the ground stone dead. And then I'm going to rush the other troll and slam him with my, uh, nice. with my shield. Make a strength check. Uh, 21. You push the troll away from Jupiter Jones. And I'm going to stand in between... Nice. The troll and uh, Jupiter. Jupiter Jones is dazed and confused. Uh, uh, he's he's stabilized because you stabilize him with the kit. So next we go to Sebastian. Um, first of all, I stop concentrating on Webb and mm-hmm. I say, Lem, you might want to help out. And then I walk over here and I'm just going to scorching ray that troll. Okay, Ooh. go for it. Oh, there's my D20. <laughs> uh... 19. Hits. 15. Hits. 19. All three hit. Oh, oh, baby. Ooh, baby, I love the way. 16 plus... Twenty-two. Oh. With a barrage of fiery beams, you ventilate the troll, leaving behind a burning and searing mass of flesh that does not regenerate. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, Pluto. Remember that time I killed a troll? I saw that. I was right here. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're two, two to one? Yes. <coughs> Jupiter's men gather... The half orc bodyguard says, "Let let me see him. Let me see him." And uh, he, Jupiter Jones is completely unconscious, but he's stable. Nice he, he sees that he, he's alive. He's alive. And the the orc says, "You saved his life." That's my bodyguard right there. That's what we do. That's we what she, that's, guard that's the what bodies. Does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they uh they lemmington says she's really good lemmington wa- walks forward <laughs> wringing out his coat and says ew what are we gonna you guys these guys just peed on me and they totally cheated are you just gonna let them like walk all over us because they saved Jupiter Jones, he got himself into this situation, and I got peed on. It should be noted that I cast uh, as many spells as you did, so, and you were on the peeing rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just that you're an th- asshole, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like you, and I hope you die in the ruins in a fire. Noted. <laughs> we'll see who dies first, Lem. Yeah, Lem. Listen, you guys, we need to get. Get Jupiter and just get out of here. Let's let's leave. These guys are jerks. Uh, we had a deal. Go. Deal's off. You peed on me. That wasn't part of the deal. That that has nothing to do with it. The I'd men like to... kind of shuffle back and forth. They aren't really sure what to make of this situation. Listen, I think if Jupiter was awake right now, he would honor the agreement that we made, and I can wake him up. We have potions that can heal him so i mean do you want me to wake him up right now caspian honor do you men you caspian men have any shred of dignity left in drakenheim this is all that separates us between us (laughs) and the monsters that inhabit this great land and i and i jam my torch a little more into the dead 
Troll. Troll. Sebastian, do you want to add anything? We were promised 50%, <laughs> and we intervened, both parties intervened in this situation an equal amount, meaning it was still a fair game. And fair game means that I believe Jupiter Jones, a man who says he's of honor and loyalty, would uphold his end of the bargain. You can all make a persuasion check with advantage. Twenty-five. Eight. <laughs> Bolstered by your compatriots' words, the Caspians... My herald? The the, My the Caspians turn and, and the half-orc Bruce says, Lem, this is Caspian honor. They did right by our lord. Let's take him back to Emberwood Village and give them their due. This mound, these ratlings, you can claim the spoils, whatever they've got under there. I'm sure you're capable of it. And he says, men, turn it over. And they open up a one of their packs that they have, have assembled loot, and they turn mm-hmm. it o- and they drop it on the ground as they turn to leave. And they, as they, and then they pick up. Lord Jupiter <laughs> Jones and start hauling him and prepare to haul him off. You, uh, you've done uh, Caspi a great honor today, Bruce. And uh, and gold is gold, but blood is thicker than gold when it's frozen. <laughs> and uh, you're a strong warrior. <laughs> you Caspi might not be the smartest one, but I've seen many men fight trolls before. And you did a great job. I well fought. Thank you. And Lem as to Jupiter too. And Lemington speaks back up and says, "This isn't over, you know. <laughs> when Jupiter Jones wakes up, he's gonna be so mad, and he's gonna want revenge on you all. I just know it. We'll see you in Emberwood Village, and it's not gonna be pretty. We're gonna get that gold back. And the 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 rest of the Caspians kind of shrug at at, at Lem." And one of them kicks him in the ribs <laughs> <laughs> as they turn to leave. Because he smells like pee. I turn to you guys and I say, well, cover me in deep fried batter and call me tempura. I did not expect that ending. <laughs> Good job, Pluto. Guys. I thought you were going to. The trick was fire. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just start to walk away. and I'm like, Pluto, Pluto. You fought trolls before. Okay. Full disclosure, last time I killed a troll, he fell into fire. <laughs> as the <laughs> Full as disclosure. the Caspians walk away, the ratlings come out of their hovel hole and the rat princess, Oh, angry ghost, you save us again from big awful trolls and scary ugly men. I go up to him and I kick him in the face. <laughs> what, oh. the, the rat prince? Yes, I'm like, did you not understand? Damn. Pew, pew, pew. Stop. He's like, oh, I thought we we had many, many down there when you kill trolls. We thought, oh, yes, yes, yes. We kill men. We eat them. Yes, yes, yes. They tasty. No. Man flesh tastier than anything else in city. Rat Prince, if you get the chance, I give you permission to eat Lemmington. The little <laughs> Oh, no, I'm very, very good. But he's none like of a, the others. He's like a chicken. We could have got him. He's we like could have got him. Next time. Next, next time. We'll get you an opportunity. But As when the I rat say pew, 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 you pew, pew. <laughs> we need to come up with ones for the rat rat prince. We do need. We need like a pork chops for a rat prince. Yeah, it's pew pew. <laughs> As pew. the the ratlings, it looks like the ratlings dug an impromptu little hole to hide in. Oh. As in a clown car like fashion, <laughs> about three dozen ratlings come out from under the hole under the cart. <laughs> 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 they dug an impromptu burrow, and they bring out the char the the piece of the meteor as well. Is it big? They, it is covered in mud. They have been dragging it some way and trying to push it, but they've done a good job of this. And so the ratlings, yeah. and with that, the ratlings and the rest of you begin making your way towards the mill. Uh, but before we delve into the ruins, uh, a big thank you to Axe and Shield for, for uh, providing us with the awesome gaming accessories you 
have seen us using, like this uh, beautiful oh, initiative that tracker, good. and that <laughs> spun around perfectly. <laughs> um, and also uh, for tabletop audio for the great ambient music you're listening to. Yeah, we got a new mix tonight. I really was trawling through tabletop audio's newest tracks. So there's some new songs in here. Hopefully they are a nice mix for the atmosphere. This we'll, we'll keep trying to bolster that up and uh, get yeah. a nice a nice list of music happening. And finally to 100 Years Boar for the amazing voice work he does in our intro video. And also, if you are enjoying the show and you want to help support us, uh, you can check out our Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Yeah, a lot of our patrons really love our Patreon because it's a great way to get in touch with us. Uh, a bunch of our patrons have asked us for extra help with play new player advice, builds for their characters, and such and so forth. So if you're interested in engaging with us one-on-one, like if you've got questions about how to run your campaign or how to create your characters and uh, talking to us through Patreon is one of the best ways to ask those questions. Mm. Before the break, we had a bit of a challenge Ooh. between Paluto Jackson and Jupiter Jones, where the pair of them were dueling a pair of trolls, hairy and ugly, as they were nicknamed, in front of an overturned wagon where the rat prince and the other ratlings had hidden themselves. <laughs> In the battle, Jupiter Jones was defeated by the troll, and the rest of you came to the rescue of Lord Jupiter Jones, not leaving him to die to his fate, but rather Veo dashed in to save him, stabilizing with a healer's kit. You managed to convince the rest of his, his soldiers to leave peacefully as they drop off several of the spoils that they had found in the city as payment for saving Jupiter Jones and not leaving him to the fate of the troll. All in all, in across the bags, they have found several several bags of gold, but also several gems, and by and large, a lot of it appears to be loot, like precious plates of silver, golden candelabras, a few tapestries as well that they've looted from the ruins, mm. in addition to a fair nice. ma- amount of gold. All said, it's about 250 gold pieces in coins, but the remaining objects that they have left are probably worth another 500 gold pieces. Oh. You can give that jazz to the commander for the Hooded Lanterns. He can have a bunch of silverware. <laughs> or we could give it to the guy in Umberwood Village and he can sell it and oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, money. Guys, technically, we didn't find this within the city walls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We I found sh- this yeah, here. What am I? You know what? I'm really glad I have my my tax experts <laughs> <laughs> with me. Too. You guys are my H and R block. <laughs> also, they have left behind the corpses the of the trolls, which have bits of delirium growing out of their flesh. I go pick those up. <laughs> oh, I'm prying those out. Yeah, let's re- let's do what some do I surgery. Get from that? Um, you are able to cut into their flesh and harvest six small shards of delirium. Yes. I'm gonna be a butcher. Shunk. All day long. Shunk. I'm gonna be the butcher singing butcher um, songs. The rat Shunk. prince as you cut into it. Oh yes, we eat troll now. Yes, yes, yes. Eat, eat, eat. It's all yours. Yeah, oh, yeah. you guys. And, and the, the 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 rattlings cast and they oh and they and they start going as Veo finishes extracting the delirium. Um, the rattlings begin h- hacking off the burnt limbs of the troll, and several of the rattlings start singing like, "Oh, we love to cook our meat. We love to have our dinner." <laughs> It's a good song. I think even Classic. I have uh, um, higher standards. And the, the you ratlings, know? <laughs> like their eyes are like, oh, oh, so rare. We don't cook our meat very often. It's nice and tasty, crispy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just so tasty, adorable. tasty trolls. Uh, question for you, Rat Prince, regarding this uh, giant chunk of meteor. Oh yes, we have brought it for you. Yes, 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 yes. I managed to sneak my way out, find the other rats. They bring it. They had many, many problems without me. One of them fell on my good friend. He <laughs> he was squished. We ate him. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I we we saw. Um, <laughs> did you think that maybe if you were able to break the rock into smaller pieces, it might be easier to carry? 
the ratlings all just kind of look at you blankly. No, 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 no. We push, we push, we pull, we push, we pull, we push, we pull. He's okay. There's many of us. Yes, 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 yes. Many hands make light work. They're very could, smart. Could you guys? Oh, I guess you want. They want to build it into a statue, don't they? Well, hmm. but I don't. I mean, let, let's. I was. I was going to say, if you wanted to, you could build it. You could break it into smaller pieces, and we could help you carry. Well, being the you were the apprentice for your dad, right? Would would he benefit from if it was broken down, or does he want one big chunk? It would take longer to heat up, so probably smaller pieces would be. It's probably gonna have to melt it down and break it up anyway. Yeah, but it might so. be hard. You'll need tools to break it apart. Yeah, that's why I was gonna make the rats do it. Does he have tools? Though? Chew it, <laughs> chew it off. I don't know, just chew it into <laughs> pieces. I don't know if their teeth would survive that. <laughs> Nevertheless, the ratlings have developed a methodology for carrying this thing. With basically several of them, they pull out several ropes and bits of timber and wood, and they basically roll it forward on a few logs here and there, pulling it with some ropes. It's very haphazard. Ch they change methods. It seems to be the meandering path of like, sometimes they roll it across some logs. Sometimes they all try to lift it up and carry it, inevitably <laughs> dropping it. Sometimes they push it. Sometimes they pull it. But after a little while... Of we follow, can help. You can help, and you're able to bring the this big piece of meteoric rock up to the Ackerman Mill. Amazing. Great. Now we have to get it all the way to yeah, you know what, we, we've been go, we've wait, going wait, the wrong way. Would <laughs> River know how to break it up easier? Maybe. She's magic, isn't she? We can she? ask her. Thanks, rats. Yeah. So you've arrived once again mm. at the Ackerman Mill. The campsite that has been shared among several other adventurers still leaving the embers of whichever group was camped out here last and as you step inside the dank and creaky old wooden mill the the windmill is kind of turning with loud creaking even though the machinery inside is broken you can see that there are a few more names scrawled on and scrawled off the walls of the Ackerman mill we almost got to scratch Jupiter's name off this list, but... I'm going to add RP to our list for Rat Prince. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, uh, But I also don't want to just give away that we're hanging out with a Rat Prince, so <laughs> we're going to call him RP. The Ratlings all swarm inside the mill and go, Oh, this very nice place. Yes, 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 yes. Very cozy. Make it like a home. I mean, if you want. Yeah, I guess you could have this this, this place. It's be your winter home. Hmm. Is not safe. We have to dig underneath. Yes, 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 yes. Go for it. Start to build a. Can oh. you build a tunnel? <laughs> can you build a tunnel? All the way to, to the Everwood city? Village? Oh, we try, we try, we try digging under the city. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But you have to dig very, very deep. The rock, very, very thick, very, very tough. Too hard for our small hands. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. Oh. Maybe we could get them excavating tools. Yeah. Like, what if we got the rat prints teach them to mine and start a mining oh. industry <laughs> we could like give them like little pickaxes and stuff made of this meteorite oh. and they could like chip through yeah because then we'd have a direct way into the city without yeah. using the we gate could have all these tunnels that, that are controlled years, by the rats but <laughs> yeah this will only take this us is a, a nine years. year project Ooh. it's gonna cost seven thousand delirium <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you could burrow a little bing, bing. hole underneath, even if it's not connected to the city. Feel free, as long as you don't collapse the building. Oh. The the ratlings, roughly 40, there, there's almost 40 of them. There's about all said, including the rat prints, that have all now assembled in the Ackerman <laughs> mill of varying sizes. Um, maybe only about a dozen of them are fully bipedal. Um, the rest of them are small rat, smaller rats that clamor forth and forward the rat prince by comparison is gigantic compared to the other ratlings um, the ratlings having delivered the meteor piece here the rat prince asks oh ghosts why you come out of the city so soon what you do next Well, I mean, we, for now, finished what we need to in the city. Doesn't mean we're not going to come back and visit. 
but uh, we uh, we have some business to take care of. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Do you know when the great rat god will come for us? Uh, about a this year. Is, this is uh, st- phase one of a multi-phase, unknown ending phase we're, cycle. We're aiming for a year, but it could be longer. Oh, much waiting, much waiting. We will need to eat many more meals before then. Yep. Yes. And not anger the heralds of the rat god. Oh. Remember earlier. You save us from trolls. You save us from men. We owe you much, much, much ghosts. Oh, ghosts. You not worry. We not try to shoot you in the back like pull a trick. We think about it, but no, 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 no. We not anger a rat god. Good. I wouldn't shoot us in the back. This it is, would be uh, bad. This is weird, but we also... <laughs> this meteorite, we need to kind of go the other way. You wouldn't want to keep dragging this thing around, <laughs> would you? <laughs> like, like pulling out our trusty map. Uh, <laughs> the biggest issue is that you got to get this thing across the river. Yeah. If you want to get oh, it back yeah. to Amberwood it's all in the village. That's why I figured it was safe here. For now? For now, because like, it's so hard to move that it's not even... Like, it's not even a fun thing to try to steal. So it's just going to sit here until we figure out what to do with it. Could we potentially bring your dad over here to help break it down? Potentially. Or, yeah, or we could figure out how to break it down. Maybe he can tell us. And then we could... Uh, That's why I'm wondering if River might have a magical yeah. way of doing mm. it. That's worth asking. Yeah. Um, the Rattlings have consumed... <laughs> What remains of the trolls? <laughs> did that satisfy them? It it did, and the rat prince turns to you bo- to turn you all and say, "If you n- you still need us, we stay. We try not to go too far outside the city. The clean air hurt our lungs. Yes, yes, yes. I think you're good to go home. Yeah. Yeah. You've, yes. You've done such great work. For Your us. services are very mm. appreciated. The gods will be pleased." You staying in that tower, yes? The clicky clock clock tower, yes, yes, yes? That's a base of operations for us now, yeah. With the fishes? Uh, The fishes are below. Okay, you know where you find me. You need me again. Yes, yes, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Do we? The rat's nest. Okay, yeah. Okay, bye for now. Bye. Bye, And the rat prince. prince assembles the ratlings who... S- squeaking and marching, scurry back into the ruins of the city and out of sight. Such a good minion. They're really like they're really loyal. Yeah. I well, I miss that loyalty amongst servants. He's loyal I mean, now. They do believe that we represent their god. Oh my gosh, they're gonna yeah. try to kill us if they ever find yeah. him. We gotta <laughs> really keep this ruse out. It's not like we couldn't wipe them out, but we don't want to. I know. They're friends. Could dare I say, friends? Nah. I mean. I've had very few <laughs> close friends in my life, and sadly, I think the Rat Prince is in the top ten. <laughs> Rat Prince just made top ten friends. List. Listen, I only have two upper slots for friends, and you guys so far have that. Aww. Yeah. I mean, River was my best childhood friend, but uh, Rat Prince seems to be nicer to me than she does. <laughs> well, I heard you saying that. And with that... She's standing right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> with that, a short time passes before... The familiar footsteps of River's guardian can be heard in the distance. It sh- and it is then that you see River approaching. As always, she is, has her hood, the purple hood of the Amethyst Academy, drawn up over her face. And she walks forward, protected by that strange full-plate armored guardian who carries a shield and a flaming sword whose face you cannot see beneath the visor. She walks forward, and as she catches sight of you, she pulls her hood back. You can see River with her dark red, reddy brown mottled skin and her flowing blue hair that, with her horns twisted back like a pair of boats floating in her hair. In her hair. Her kind of spectacle, she kind of pushes her spectacles back up over her brow, as her, she addressed her hood. And she's kind of got that short kind of riding leathers that she's wearing. Most of the mages of the Amethyst Academy, you got to be an old professor to wear robes like a classic wizard in the academy. 
she pulls her hood down and says, right on time. Uh, there was a bunch of rattlings coming this way. I was scared to approach. What was that? Uh, new friends. Seriously? We work with what we can in Drakenheim. How did you manage that? They, uh, oh, they believe that uh, we're the heralds of their god. It's a long story, but we, we did some convincing. You know... Superstition. Smart. There's a lot of it in this city, and you can get a long way when people don't know what you're capable of. Well, you know me. I like, uh, I like to find ways to convince people to do things. Well, how do things go? Uh, excellent, actually. I, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Uh, you sent us to investigate Oscar. Yeah, that was almost a week ago. Yeah. Wow. It's been a long week. <laughs> Actually, probably longer than that, now that I think about it. I don't know. I think you spent like two or three days in Emberwood Village. Yeah. And another two or three days. Yeah, probably maybe almost two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been trying. We've been <laughs> trying to find our way through the city. Yeah, there's been a lot going on. Um, but we did get a lot of great information from, from Oscar. And um, what happened? Give me. I'd like to know the full report. We uh, we left him alive because. Okay. She crosses her arms. Interestingly enough, the work that he's doing could be extremely valuable. And once again, uh, my instinct to try to manipulate everybody I talk to. Um, that's not a good thing. Um, I think that we can use him. He doesn't want to work for you but he doesn't know that the information he gives me comes back to you. That might be useful. Where's his research? He's informed me of what he's working on, and I've taken notes. Here's my notes. He's working on a resistance to the haze. He has the ability himself to drink delirium to be able to cast more spells. He's using a plant in Queen's Park Gardens called the Eldritch Lilies. Mm. And he's noted that delirium grows more like a plant, specifically a fungus. And it takes a very long time to grow, but that's why there seems to be more delirium than there was when it first hit. This is fascinating news. Did you manage to steal or secure any of his actual research or notes? We felt bad about hurting a nerd. Uh, we never... We He needed his research to continue. Um, and his research is incomplete. It's not full yet. And we think he can do more good for the Amethyst Academy if we can get him to complete his research and then we can steal we it. We need him more at 100%. She sighs. We need something tangible. You can take my notes. We can get you... Those are your... I appreciate them. But right now you're just giving me your word on what you learned from him. For all you know, he could have been lying to you. Well, I mean, he also took my blood to experiment what? with. What? Yeah. <laughs> so Were we, we not supposed to do that? We're working. <laughs> he's working with. Great job. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he tried. He's working with tabaxi yeah. blood to see if there's a resistance. Listen, if. Oscar Yorn has developed something with tabaxi blood or el or the eldritch lilies or has figured out anything with delirium. We need to know exactly where his research is at and we need his research itself so we can study it. Whatever he's figured out, whatever he's learned is secondary to whatever he might might learn at this point. We care more about what he's done, not what he's doing. She turns to her compatriot and has him produce his backpack, out of which she pulls a glowing purple vial. We've already developed a way to drink delirium. No. Oh. 
I think they're letting us know that. Yeah, was a, a heads up. Yeah, that would have been nice to know before we went in there. And I was very excited by this news. The whole basis on me keeping him alive and letting him continue his research was based on that. Well, things are on a need to know basis, and straight up, the academy didn't want me to let the, let you know about this until you come back successfully with more information. It's because of my delirium habit I used to have. Can't let him near it. He goes crazy. It's like catnip. Listen, this puts us behind now. We were expecting to have the have this more information so we could start planning our next steps. But look, if Oscar Yorin thinks he can develop some sort of resistance to the haze or anywhere that we can get deeper into the city, that's amazing. We need to know that. Because the Academy actually has the resources that if he's bound anything, we can make it reality. He's working in a, in a little lab with whatever resources he can scrounge together. And you want to work with him when we have the resources the, of the entire academy at our disposal? The research, his ideas, were what we need to jumpstart our work. I'm sorry, but you haven't really done the job, guys. Maybe we can get you some Eldritch Lilies and show you what they do. That may be so. But if it could be, for all we know, Oscar Yorin was lying to you and telling you whatever he needed to know to get rid of you. You left him alive. Who's to say if he wasn't lying? Who's to say even if anything of what he said about delirium growing, if that's actual fact or not? Without his research notes, without us being able to study them directly, we've got nothing. Can we get a team huddle real quick? <laughs> If there's anything that you need to talk about, you can talk about it with me. It's embarrassing. I have a, <laughs> I have a bladder. <laughs> Fine, I'll give you a moment, and I'm going to try to contact one of my superiors. Thank you, River. Pluto, I didn't know you had a bladder problem. Are you okay? <laughs> you know what? It's don't worry about it. <laughs> um, we did we screw up? I've. I've never been told I didn't complete a mission from the Amethyst Academy. I thought that... I have. <laughs> we ne I think we no. need to compartmentalize <clears throat> going forward. Wait, should I have Should I have killed him? Yeah, I felt bad about... I still feel like we made the right decision based on what we had. Um, I've, we always, I've always done what River asked me to. Maybe we got to go back and get... Maybe we got to go him. shake him down again. Yeah, let's go. I think we should visit him again. And I hope he's still in the same place. He will. Be. Well, how else are we going to get him to Baxi blood? He needs me. He needs you. He needs your blood. But we, we need to figure out how the Eldritch Lilies work, if what he's saying is true. And we have to bring some hard evidence to Lily. If not research papers, then probably something that they can work with. Okay. Let's do it. And then... But yeah, I do. So I, many quests. I do have a bad bladder problem. I just wanted to just yeah, I do. Thanks for actually worrying worrying about me. Yeah. As you turn back to River, well, we'll look into securing the actual notes that Oscar possesses. And um, I'm sorry I let you down, River. Listen, at this stage, things are moving forward. I need to meet Eldrick in, in Emberwood Village tomorrow. Oh, we were going to be on our way there. Actually, could you, you... You don't happen to know a good way to carry a <laughs> meteorite. You happen to know how to... She kind of cocks her head. What? I need Compartmental to get Compartmental lies. <laughs> I need to get this meteorite to Emberwood Village. Can you help me? Her eyes go wide when she looks at that. That's a piece of the meteor. Yeah. By the way, can I have one of those potions? <laughs> oh, uh, we brought you more delirium. <laughs> there. See, now we're trading. 
<laughs> where she sighs. <laughs> and she she Quirk has a cut this. Um <laughs> go ahead. She kind of she she kind of smiles that creepy smile that she has that where you can just see how sharp her teeth are a little bit too much. Mm. And she says I am applaud your enthusiasm. It looks like you've done some great things. In the meantime, I can help you get this meteor to Amberwood Village. I don't know what you want to do with it. It's, it's iron. It's great. It's She's brought delirium. We can work out a deal with Eldrick when he gets here. But we have to decide what our next steps are because I can't in good conscience send you back into the city and going after Oscar Yorin until we know for sure that he's not on to us because the stage our cover could be completely blown too. I don't think we're that reckless personally, but well, <clears throat> I mean, that's fair. If you can help us with this uh, meteor chunk, um, will you let us know if there's more work that we can do? We'll do better. You know, my track record with the Amethyst Academy. I'm sorry about this one mishap. This is disappointing. We've been really vouching for you, but we wanted more at this time. I guess maybe what, the next time we need someone killed, we should come to you. But I thought you were going to be capable of handling something a little more delicate this time. Mm. Well, we have a day, right? You meet Eldrick tomorrow. If you get the meteorite back to Emberwood, we'll get information from Oscar. And we'll meet you in Emberwood Village. Didn't she just say not to do that? She doesn't want us going after Oscar right now because he might be onto us. But she wants one that he knows. We do, but we're going to have to plan that step carefully now. I mean, he trusts us. Yeah, he loves us. We're like buds. I'm conflicted. She says, I, I am as well. To be perfectly honest, in my... In my estimation, what we can get from Oscar Yorn right now, keeping your position with him, yes, maybe he's found out some more things. Yes, maybe his information is still valuable. Yes, maybe we should play that ruse a little bit more. And directly stealing from him or killing him and taking his notes, maybe that's not what, not the play that we want to do right now. That need, was my thoughts. You need to tell us. You need to make a judgment call and figure this out because if you're disappointed we don't have the information, we're willing to go and get it. If you yeah. want us to keep playing this ruse, we'll keep playing the ruse. Because that's the what ribs. we're doing right now. We're you killing tell it. Us. Or if you want us to cool it until you give us the word to go ahead, we can do that as well. What if we go grab the Eldritch Lilies yeah. and then meet Oscar to push, the, push it forward? Because that's what he needs, right? Yeah. So we can help him with his research more. But that's if the Amethyst Academy wants us to do that. So Amethyst Academy, what do you want us to do? I think that the prospect of getting some Eldritch Lilies and getting him to synthesize mm. whatever potion he thinks is working might prove useful. If he can make one of these potions for us and you can bring it back to us, we could reverse engineer it and he wouldn't know that we've taken anything from it. So, sounds like we did make the right decision. I think we, I think we kind of nailed it. Mm -hmm. We'll bring you a synthesized potion or a potion and we'll bring some Eldritch Lilies. Yeah. Do you have those? We've had samples of them in the past but they came in years and years ago. Very few people have been able to make it into the inner city. Are you confident that you're going to be able to get there? Huh. <laughs> we've been by there already. No, we've been, we not by Queen's Park Garden, but we've been in and out of the city. You've been in and out of the inner part of the city? Yeah. yeah. How did you arrange that? We worked our way in. Uh, the, remember the Well, you friends? didn't tell me that. That's a huge development. Have huh. you been anywhere near the tower? We... The Amethyst Academy's tower? Yes. No. Not yet. No. Do you it's... want us to do that? Yeah. Hey, oh, new mission. I'd love to go check that <laughs> This place, is though. good news. You should have told me this before yeah. that you'd actually made it inside the city. We were so focused on Oscar. 
Yeah, <laughs> our so job was to, to give you information about Oscar. I was so excited to tell you about our failure with Oscar. <laughs> How did you do that? Through the sewers using the rat folk. Like I said, we made new friends. It's brilliant. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have doubted you quite so quickly. You messed Thank up you. with Oscar Yorin, but this is an amazing development. <laughs> We're not disappointments! <laughs> We're not disappointed. <laughs> All right. We cheer at the prospect of not disappointing River. So me and River used to do the craziest magic together and all sorts of <laughs> shenanigans. And now she is judging me based on my antics. <sighs> Look at. I'm just glad that you're. You seem to be making more friends than enemies at this stage. You're right. <laughs> I do. I do have a tendency to. Um, cause uh, incidents. incidents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's what I think we can agree on. I'm going to make back make my way to Emberwood Village where I'm going to meet with Eldrick. The Mage Guild is getting ready to make our move. That's all I know at this stage. But there's a lot more people that are taking an interest in the city over the past few weeks. I'm going to make my way there, and I'll meet you there. You go, get these Eldritch Lilies, bring them to Oscar Yorin, get him to do his work, whatever you need to do, whatever he needs you to do to get this potion of his done and finished, do it. Once you once he has the potion finished, we need a complete dose and sample of it. So if you have to if he only makes one and he's not gonna give it to you, kill him and get it. And then take all his research. Th- at this stage, that's enough of va- enough value for Oscar Yorin to buy his life for a little bit longer. If you get everything all of his research once he's made that potion, he's not of any use to us anymore alive. So I leave it up to you what you want to do from there. Okay. Good. I think we can work with those instructions. Pluto? Yeah, I'm on board. I was just thinking about the cat's blood, but uh, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I, was thinking, I was like, he just, he just wants more of your blood. I don't know. Just a thought I had. Lily's. What's sure up, he, River? Make sure he doesn't lie to you or try to trick you. He might say or do anything and be banking on the fact that you don't understand the details of his research to try to get you to get away. If he thinks that you might just be interested in something, that's fine. Especially with these potions. She stops herself and thinks for a moment. You have to make sure the potion works. Oh, yeah. So then we need two. You need enough to know that the potion works. Uh Uh-oh. I need at least, like, two servings of potion. We're going to need a few servings. And I'm going to And you're going to to need to test it as well. Oh, yeah. And this is to not bring back spells, but resistance, right? Or whatever he yeah. decides to do with it. You want that means me you're to... going to need to go somewhere where there's deep haze. Yep. Like... Is that the mage tower? Or the crater? The mage tower, the castle, and the crater. Ooh. You want me to get the potion, drink it, <laughs> and walk into deep haze and hope for the best? You don't have to be your guinea pig. It doesn't have to be you. <laughs> can just do the ratlings. <laughs> no, not the ratlings. They're resistant to it already. Oh, Jupiter. that means I'm out. <gasps> it needs to be a human. Huh. What about... <laughs> Guys? <laughs> you're... You. Oh, oh, you're half out. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we can scrounge up a human. I'm, so I'm half paying attention. <laughs> I can look up. What? <laughs> if we can convince Jupiter Jones to drink the potion to go into a dangerous area. We'll work on that. We'll work on that. I don't think we need to convince him. If if we were to give him a a potion of 
haze resistance and it works, that's like a win for him. He could do incredible things. It just depends on how long it lasts for. I wouldn't want to give him unlimited haze resistance. When I say convince, I mean more so play off the, well, I have a potion that can allow me to go anywhere in the city. And we'll bet him and mm. lose. And then we'll bet him and lose. Bet him and lose. Bet him and lose. I think we can maybe come up with something. Well, we I could also drink someone. it. River, we got you. We'll figure it out. I've got one more for you. Whoever drinks this potion, it might be good to have a blood sample before and after. Okay. <laughs> I can figure that out too. Collect as much information as you can. I thought you were going to say as much blood as you can. <laughs> no, we, we don't need much, much blood, but if we can get a sample of someone's blood before they've been affected by it and after, oh, if we could even get the blood of someone who actually was exposed to the deep haze, then we'd have a control subject. Can you get a control subject? Why don't, oh. That would actually be excellent. Can you try to get a blood sample of someone who's been exposed to the haze? Without resistance. I was going to say without resistance, right? Um, we could like talk, a body? We could talk to the... Uh, no, we need a, someone who's been exposed to it but is alive. We could talk to the cult. Yeah, the cult. Of the falling fire. They love the haze. Yeah, they they're just all about chill it. in it. Yeah. We have some contacts there. We've met some people. Okay. Okay. They get contact haze. I think Eldrick and the, the Academy will be happy with this. I'm never going to say that again. Go to Queen's Park Gardens. Get Eldritch Lilies. Get Oscar to make these potions and f- get as much as many samples as you can. Bring them back to me and Eldrick in Emberwood Village as soon as you can. And you're going to carry this meteorite? <coughs> I got you covered. Oh, thanks. Hey, Ribs. Um, I have eight pieces of delirium for you. Ooh. Okay. How much did I get? I've got some more salmon for you. <laughs> and for the rest of you, I've got some gold. Ooh. Can I have some But gold I also too? have something special. Yeah. I'll pay you 50 gold pieces for each shard. Wow. Cool. Are we rich? I'm going to pay you for those shards. And I'm going to give you these as an advance on the job that you haven't finished yet. She pulls out the vials. She gives you six vials. <laughs> Look how excited she, he is. She, hold, she holds it in front of you, Sebastian, and says, Sebastian, this is Aqua Delirium. It has been synthesized by the Mage Guild distilled delirium in liquid form. You can drink it. But (laughs) don't drink more than one. Because it will make you really sick if you do. Within a certain time period? Sick and powerful. Sick with fire. So, aqua delirium. To explain in game terms, Here's how it works. These potions, you can drink one, and when you do, you regain 1d3 plus 1 levels worth of spell slots. Oh. However, if you regain 4 spell slots, the maximum possible when you drink a dose of Aqua Delirium, the next spell you cast will trigger a wild magic surge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do it for. <laughs> if you drink more than one dose of Aqua Delirium in a 24 hour period, you will take 1d12 psychic damage per spell slot recovered and have your hit point maximum reduced by an amount equal to the damage dealt, and nothing can prevent that damage. And does it go away after like an amount of time? So one it, it, the, the hit points lost go away after you take a long rest if this damage if the damage from drinking aqua delirium kills you 
It's very bad. <laughs> I foresee some drinking of potions in my future. So if I have to drink the resistance to the haze thing, you have to try this. <laughs> He'll oh, willingly. I'm going to be trying this. He'll willingly try it. I know, I know. I should. I, I'm already curious to see what happens if you, I die. You try from to it. drink it now, and we have to stop you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, get them all to yeah. She says, "We learned the hard way what happens when you overdose on aqua delirium, and it's not pretty." Ugh. Paint me a word picture. <laughs> imagine being turned inside out. Ooh. <laughs> now imagine that happening to you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. Noted. What were you imagining? I don't want to see your insides, kid. Yeah. Uh, okay. I've seen the outsides and it looks bad enough. So you're taking all this Zing. aqua delirium? Yes. Okay. Thank would you. It, would it work on tabaxis? She you says, it on a tabaxi? <laughs> if you'd like to test it, you're more than welcome to. I don't know if I want to test it. Leave it to the as long as you don't guys casters. as long as you don't chug it as long as you're not doing back to backs I think you're okay don't, don't double chug. fist yeah later. no double fisting of <laughs> the already, of the like, I'm I am already <laughs> holding two of the vials I'm, I'm like, wondering oh, if I should yeah. be holding this on your behalf yeah, just, I'll should we split it no up? I got I got it okay I got it don't you have a I don't you have it. a delirium problem <laughs> that you're trying to get over no that's I, I it, the idea of it empowering me is very intriguing, but I've never actually been able to actively test that because it's horribly poisonous. I may have tried a few times when I was younger and it didn't go over well. I was sick for days. Oh. Mm. But now I can drink it. <laughs> okay. And it I'm will sorry. make me more powerful. Mm. And this is interesting. It's a, it's a thick, kind of soupy liquid that is a translucent purple in color and it glows softly inside the vials each vial is only about the the aqua delirium itself the vials only contain about two ounces of liquid so it's not a lot of stuff like you can basically pound it back like a shot shots 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 no <laughs> you're gonna do no it in the middle of battle <laughs> i i am um <laughs> Thank you, River. Thank you. Thank okay. you, River. I'm glad that we were able to end on good terms. I'd and, hate to uh, have you upset with me. We look forward to Fish. finishing off our mission with Oscar. Good Thanks hunting. For, Thanks for giving us a second chance. And testing the new potion. That you want we... me to take this meteor to Amberwood Village for you? Oh, yeah. Drop it off at the Crow, Crow Manor. Crow and Sons? Yeah, Crow and Sons. Just drop it off at Crow and Sons. Oh, your dad. Yeah. Oh. Blacksmith. How's he? Uh, he's actually very, very well. Uh, I have a brother and two sisters now. Really? Yeah, you remarried. Oh. it's That it, must be awkward. I mean, I haven't seen him in 15 years. I mean, I guess mm. there, there was... I was... I was worried that it would be worse. And... He seems happy, and he did welcome me back into his life. So I think, uh, I mean, given the array of possibilities that could have happened, hmm. it turned out in the better favor. Oh, well, that's impressive. I guess you got a place to stay in Neverwood Village then. Yeah. Good, good. I think Eldrick's looking to make some other arrangements when we're there, but um, we'll take it one day at a time. I guess you don't go to the old house anymore, though. Don't bring no. it out. Don't bring it out. It's not. It's but, fresh, uh, fresh wound. Bark and Buzzard, <laughs> still around. Oh, really? Yeah, do you, do you, do you still, do you still drink? Um, do they have anything beyond crappy beer? No. Can I buy you one next time we're there? Sure. Cool. Old friends. New potions. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Jupiter's River, just saying word. Uh, <laughs> or, or River utters a few words. <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> and she conjures a tensor's floating disc. 
beneath the oh, she's way better wizard than meteor you. Uh, piece, and it hovers into the air and follows along behind her as her and her bodyguard begin to walk to the south towards Emberwood Village. Yeah, so the thing about River is she always knew much more tactically good spells than me. I just tended to blow things up a lot, and she mm. she was, yeah. Good team. Also, isn't he a sorcerer? We were a good team. <laughs> Not a wizard. So what's your next move, then? Yeah, I'm a sorcerer. Yeah. She's a... You're a sorcerer. To be determined. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we could rest in the barn, uh, or in the mill. Okay, so team huddle. I guess it's just us. <laughs> um, we have no rats, no meter. We have we're all alone. We have paladins that we wanted to check on because they're about to make a march on a gate, and we don't really know what they're doing here. Yeah. Uh, we do want to go to Emberwood Village because I miss my family, and we have money to spend. Mm-hmm. And now it might be beneficial to go get Eldritch Lilies before we hit up Emberwood Village? It's going to be another few days, isn't it? How long do you think it's going to take us to get Lilies? Well, okay, the way that I see it, in order to get back into the city, we need to go back through the Hooded Lantern's Gate. Yeah. Shall we pull up the map? Yeah. Sure. I the, think I see okay, where your, so your head's way. at. The Green Lantern... Green Lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> the hooded lanterns <laughs> wow the hooded lanterns want information about the paladins the paladins are down at is it temple road yeah is it? yeah they're oh, they're temple, they're camped yeah, yeah. several miles outside the city mm. so that's still a bit of a hike but what i was thinking is if we gathered that intel just went talked to them fi- found out what they were doing Headed back through uh, Shepherd's Gate, delivered that message to the Hooded Lanterns, continued on our way to Queen's Park Gardens, got Eldridge Lilies, and then went to <laughs> Emberwood Village. <laughs> Is that way too elaborate, guys? No. I'm just wondering are we backtracking too much, going That's... up, out, and back? Whereas, couldn't we go to Queen's Park, come back out Shepherd's Way? down to Temple Road and then go to Emberwood and then on our way back we can drop off that information or do you think they're going to no, attack the gate true. too quickly? Well, that's what I'm not sure of. We and then I thought of a lap <laughs> that goes to Queen's Park. We go down by the crater to collect a body that's full of haze and then go to Emberwood Village and then circle back up and talk to the paladins we, and then go to the shepherd. We can't really <laughs> go, go near the, the crater. Can we? But we have to go to the pe- the falling fire. Yeah. Right, people, and they're and, down there. And by that time, we might have a a potion. Do you think they'd let us into the champ? Or they do champions' way, right? They love us now. We we saved that monk guy. Who who occupies markets market um gate market gate? Nobody. It's uh, it, it's occupied by some monsters. Apparently. We could kill our way in. Mm. No, too much. Yes, yeah, is champions' way the falling fire? Yes, the followers of the Falling Fire control Champion's Gate. Those those are our main objectives we have, right now. We have like, Am I yeah, missing like anything? a couple I'm of different laps what's the we most could important. Do. Like getting to Emberwood Village is not necessarily the most important, but no. I think if we can get the information for River as soon as possible about the serum, but I think timeliness, the paladins are more important. Yeah, it might. That's, that's the thing is the paladins. Do you remember what the commander said? What was the I know they were assembling, but did we have a did we have a time crunch on the on the paladins? <laughs> there's there's rumblings that the paladins might be mustering to attack Temple Gate, but as far as what their timeline is on that, it's not known. Because that's that's the only concern I have mm-hmm. is if we have time, we could wait. But if we don't, we need to know before. But is that a high priority? Do we care about helping? Well, the commander depends on who we care more about it's, the commander or a river yeah. it's not so much helping the commander it's that we don't we don't know what the paladins want in drakenheim why no. are they going for a gate why are they here they're not from drakenheim they're not from uh they're not from caspia they're they're from another land 
Yeah, they're from Illyria. Illyria. Yeah, we call that non-Caspia from yeah, Caspia. I yeah, you would. Yeah. Um, Where is Oscar? <laughs> Oscar on your map is at Reed Manor, which is seven on your map. Okay. So what's what's our priority? I think this this boils down to the and so that, so that you know another high haze concentration is at ten on your map, which is where the Mage Guild Tower is. Oh yeah, we can go to the that's, Mage Guild. That's nearby. So we could keep in the north half. We'd have to find somebody alive there, a human. Yeah. What's the likelihood of that? Or I could just sit in the ma- in the haze for like a day. Well, we need your blood no. first, but no, don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> guys, what's more important? Queen's Park Gardens or the Paladins? Are we expected to have this information for Queen Park Gardens for River in the day that she's meeting with this guy? I think, uh, actually, that's a good question. Is she, like, hanging out in Emberwood Village for a while? She didn't really say. No, she, she didn't. She did seem to expect you to be doing it pretty quick, though. Like, as excited as she, as she was... It was kind of like her. The tone was she was giving you was like, "Finish the job I gave you." Yeah, I think. That, I mean, considering that was one of the first jobs we took, I think that would be, I consider to be a priority. Yes, we want to get the information for the paladins, but I suppose talking to the paladins before they kill a ton of gnolls or after they kill a ton of gnolls doesn't really make a difference. Other than to the member, the, the commander wanted them to fail, ideally. But I'm I'm uh, I'm with Veo. Um, that's where my my allegiance kind of leans towards. Is I I don't these hooded lanterns. I I'm not feeling them like the, this this tax that they're imposing and this idea that they're this old guard and and they're kind of getting in the way of Caspian treasure hunting. And yet, you they're get the only treasure. reason we can get into the city properly, so we can't burn that bridge. Yeah, we can't. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's not a bridge we can burn, but they did say you could try to talk to... Like, they weren't... They know that it's not imperative that we... Well... We're not going to complete missions, necessarily. How long will it take us to get to Temple Road? Am I it's it's not a matter of getting to Temple Road directly. It's the fact that the, the Paladin's camp is about 10 miles out of town. Hmm. They're not surrounding the gate yet. No, no. Where they're, are they then? Like, they are. They're not on the map oh, be, they're, because okay. the, they're they're about ten miles south along Temple Road. You know what we could do? Um, I'm wondering if the Rat Prince can be a lookout for the gate, or maybe he can send some spies out to watch for the movements. And if they start to move, that's when we come back and and do that. I was thinking the same thing, but even with your pigeons. Like if we found our way back to the market, your pigeons could be like could come and warn us if the it looks like the paladins are moving on the gate. Yeah. Hopefully they're intelligent enough to remember. <laughs> but <laughs> I think I don't if you know. Give them enough. Get them. Give them some more salmon. I think they'll be. I can incentivize them. Yeah. I'm okay with this. I mean, for me, it's less of uh, wanting to help the hooded lanterns. It's more wanting to know all the people we're up against in the city. Mm-hmm. But I we could talk to the paladins anytime. I just want to know what their deal is. I want to make Yeah, we'll have to. I want to make a call on them. I think the timeliness of it is yes we should know, but um if they're starting to make a move, that's I think when we need to get the information. Whereas getting the lilies and helping River out I think is a number one priority. Because that, that could also give us if we can get resistance to haze. Yeah. yeah, that could be detriment. Like, we we could really push the tower. We that could push also, the crater. That will help us with the lanterns' long term goals of the and city. Getting into better. the and getting it into the castle. Yeah, Which I think that will go is, over okay. I mean, we know Vale wants into the castle, and That's I want true. I want to check out where the meteor fell. And I want I to check out the crater. And also want to get in the castle. Why do you want to get in the castle? I like castles. I'm Caspian. It's like in my name, pretty much. <laughs> you, is are you in Drakenheim to go to the castle because you like like you it's like castles? Yeah, your sightseeing. I told you I'm a visitor. Like 
and I give the the corpse Are the, you? The, the horse corpse a <laughs> kick. I'm like, I'm loving this. Like, I I really feel like I'm part of the community. Uh, I really love killing, and I'm getting lots of choice chances to kill. Lots of good stories to take back to Casca. Yeah, I do. I I am in search of some owed debt to Caspia. What does that mean? It means that there are certain treasures that I'm sure Jupiter knows about too that belong to Caspia. And it's my job to reclaim them as part of Caspian tradition. Where are these treasures? Are they in the castle? They're everywhere. And it's my job to come find them. They're hmm. everywhere in the city. Okay. And they they are owed to my people. And this javelin is pretty cool, but it's not one of them. <laughs> I need more. I need more to send back to my family. We're we're friends, right, Pluto? Yeah. You're not you're not hiding anything. I'm no, just... I want treasure. What's to hide? Okay. Cool. I mean trust you. I want treasure. I don't trust many people. And I want the there's Caspian treasure that's in Drakenheim and it belongs to my people and I'm going Family to Family heirlooms. Anybody that I've ever trusted who's gone against that trust has wound up dead. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that you won't. Because we're friends. Yes. I trust them. You said yes very odd there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're this, good. This is working. Yeah. I think yeah, let's uh let's find um I, I would say like rat folk, at least they're a little bit more intelligent than my pigeons. Yeah. Yeah. We can use them. Is uh <laughs> and I think the uh the rat nest is along the way too. I was thinking the pigeons because they can fly like your other pit, they were able to scout out the like they can get around really quick. The rats don't, rat, but I mean that that depends if we get back mass, to the. Um, at least there's at least a bunch of them that you're okay with them. Like, yeah, we're okay with them. They're kind they of got our got some to spare. <laughs> They're kind of our. Um, they kind of do our bidding. Or we could do both. Like, then there's on the ground and in the sky. Because I feel like we'll have time by the time the paladins actually march. As a military leader, I know it takes time, and most of them will die on the way. Probably. <laughs> just Such like my leader. Just like my <laughs> So I'm speaking from personal experience. You guys wanna go uh flower picking? Are we going flower picking? We're gonna have to fight our way in. It's a wonderful time. Da, 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 da. We'll walk through a gate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I've oh, heard the like, Queen's Park Garden is a pretty dangerous place. Oh, in the fight city. in there. Yeah. yeah. I heard it's pretty dangerous too. Can so, we take uh, a nap at the the mill? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, you should, yeah. You need, we'll rest before we go. So you want to camp out at the mill and then set out again, back the way you came, <laughs> into the city again? Yep. Yes. Sounds okay. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> I well, think we didn't know that we had this job. We <clears throat> needed to meet River. She didn't want to meet us that's, in that's the That's true. And heading in and out of the city is par for the course. And yeah. we got uh, we got the yeah. meteorite deal. Well, yeah. Well, we that did. was a huge. Yeah, yeah. This has been a winning. Winning trip out of the city. Yeah. Okay. Got delirium, aqua, aqua delirium. Yeah, I'm gonna drink yeah. some of that. Yeah, you gotta make Save sure. Save it for a good time. Please, no, no, don't go crazy on it. <laughs> okay, Pluto. I've got my eye on you. <laughs> okay. So with that, you make camp at the Ackerman Mill. I'm guessing probably having most of these conversations that you just had as you settle down. Yeah. yeah, we were setting up camp and yeah. chatting, and um, and setting out the next day to head back the way you came into the city. Back through, you're gonna go through Shepherd's Gate at the Hooded Lanterns and use that to get back in the city. Then, okay. Flash our badge. Yeah. Peace, peace. Yeah. <laughs> the rats come out. <laughs> no, not the sign. <laughs> not the sign. <laughs> Workshops. Okay. Workshops. And what? By what way do you want to head to Queen's Park Garden? Um. Well, first we're gonna go by the rats' nests, which is which number? Are we? Well, we gotta get the rat prints. Okay. Prince. Yeah. So before we can actually go, we have to get oh, them wait. set up to watch the from the. Carn Hills, then we head down to Shepherd's Way, hit up the rat's nest just to let the rat prince know what's up, head through Shepherd's Gate, and then it looks like there's kind of a straight 
And we head straight for Elder Chilelis. Yeah, straight shot, a right, mm -hmm. and then there's some back roads that kind of lead right to Queen's Park Garden. Okay. So, I'm I'm pretty okay to kind of fly through the, through that, and because that way, this way that you've traveled now, the the way through around Shepherd's Way towards the gates. Well, there are rat folk in that area. You're known to the rat folk. So when you encounter them, they recognize you for who you are rather than attack you. <laughs> Which is really what most of the pro what most of the people that get hurt in Shepherd's Way are attacked by rat folk who fear you and know you. So that is a way in and out of the city. It's actually pretty safe for you to just take Shepherd's Way in and out. Getting to the, the rat's nest um, and letting the rat prince and his family know to keep an eye <laughs> on Temple Gate for you is no problem. And they'll they'll let you know what they know, but you're going to have to come back. Like, do you, the, the question is, do you want them, like, how do you want them to warn you? How are they going to get information to you about that changing? Are there rat folk in the city? Can they use the sewers to come contact us? Like the way we got in? Mostly just the rat prince has has a route. So they could come and get you if there was something going going down. Yeah. But it would probably need to be the rat prince himself okay. that comes. I think if we... What we can do is... If we haven't come back yet, come find us at the Queen's Park Garden. But on our way back out of the city, we can stop by and say you don't have to do it anymore if nothing's happened. Also, if we stop and ever stay at the clock tower again, yeah. we should be able to tell if the paladins are moving. Like, we if we stop them. there at least once between now and... Like, if we if we just did a quick... Uh, maybe on our way south, yeah. we could stop in and just take a quick look. Yeah. Yeah. Take we a rest after. can get a view and see what's up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We can do that. All right, I think what we will do is we will uh, wrap up there for this for this evening, and we will pick it up right away at Queen's Park next week. Ooh. Um, we'll uh, you'll have a little bit of a trek through the city streets, but at at this stage, if you're traveling by Shepherd's Way, that area of the city is pretty much safe traveling for for your group. Um, we've unlocked that part of the map. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Woo! It's a, a waypoint. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is a safe way to get in and out of the city and that you've made the agreements. I think that that's a pretty big achievement that just just that alone, that you have that passage in and out is a big advantage that very few people in Drakenheim have. Mm. Yeah. Ribs be jealous. Yeah, take that, Jupiter. Are we... Ah, oh, Jupiter has it too. I feel like... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but he got beat up by a troll, so I'm still winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, you beat rat folk, harpies, trolls, multiples, gnolls, gnolls trolls, and gnolls, and trolls, and, 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 and cubes. Trolls, gnolls, and what are the cubes called? Just cubes. gelatinous, gelatinous cubes. cubes. Gnolls, trolls, and gelatinous cubes. <laughs> gnolls, trolls, and gelatinous cubes. Yeah. Oh I'm my. feeling I'm feeling pretty <laughs> uh, high up on my horse that died in the rivers. <laughs> 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 Bye, horse. I, I miss you, horse. <laughs> Was his name Horse? <laughs> oh, no, his yes. name was Benny. Oh. You had to get Benny! Him like, Eggs Benny? Yeah. Alrighty. Eggs Benny. He used to eat eggs. So, we'll wrap up there for this evening. Um, a really big thank you to our cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe. Thank you. Veo, Senya, Sebastian, and Paluto, respectively as well as to uh, Kyle for working so hard behind the scenes and our producer Clayton for keeping things organized uh, with Dungeon Dudes as a whole. Uh, if you're enjoying the stream and want to support our work, check out our Patreon. Uh, you can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Uh, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel. We where we are as the Dungeon Dudes. We cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. We just had our, our last video that dropped as well was our holiday gift guide for 2018, where we really did a 
full retrospective of all the cool stuff that came out for D&D this year. So if you are thinking about stuff to add to your own wish list or you're shopping for some, for someone else, especially if you're a new player, check that out on our YouTube channel. Or if you're shopping for, for me or Monty. <laughs> Although we, I own, actually, we own it no, all. I, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm one of those people that I, I, I tend to warn my, my friends and family, don't get me a D&D gift. Because for the holidays, because I yourself. probably already have it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> half of the stuff in that video is Monty's, so you can always buy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we also have prior episodes of this campaign for your viewing pleasure there as well. So if any of you, if any of you joined us for the first time and were wondering what's happening in this show, uh, you can check out the prior episodes there uh, and get the full recap. Uh, tonight's game session audio again brought by Tabletop Audio, and I hope everyone loved the new uh, playlist that you set up. Uh, looking forward to hear feedback. Yes, and the narration in the introduction was performed by 100 Years Boar, so thank you very much. And our amazing game accessories were generously provided by Axe and Shield. If you have not checked out his uh, his stuff, he makes all sorts of incredible, so incredible funny. accessories for Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, definitely check it out. It's amazing stuff, and it really amplifies the game. Yeah, and the miniatures that we use on the battle map are all uh, WizKids miniatures for the from the official D and D and Pathfinder lines. We also have uh, Hero Forge miniatures uh, for the player characters, and tonight's assortment of terrain included stuff by um, Battlefield in a Box, which is Gale Force Nine, Dwarven Forge, uh, and the awesome uh, Terra Tiles uh, by our very good friend Heath. Uh, who I don't know if they're still in production anymore. Actually, yeah, I don't. I don't know. He's working on a elder dice. Yeah, the the terra tiles are super cool, and if you can ever pick these up, they're an awesome uh, accessory for uh, setting up above ground locations. Um, in the, in any case, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Dragon. Mm-hmm.